Oh shit! So, so we're live. Just like that. Yeah, I'm. I'm here with the uh, resident expert on the Young Turks. Yeah, it's um, it's a weird thing for me. I started off as a fan of theirs, very me briefly. Too. Yeah, I lost interest because it didn't compel me. But there was not that much content of that was on my side of the political aisle. So I was like, oh, cool. It's people on YouTube who agree with me politically. That was my naive understanding of them. And then I started watching them and I was like, oh shit, this is terrible. I don't want them representing me. I would argue that uh, their content changed over the year. I mean, they were always progressive, but uh, in the beginning they were having a lot more fun and they were willing to contradict each other and have different opinions and different takes on subjects. and. Um, when the social justice activists would go too crazy, they would call them out. Um, they mm. even had like uh, fun shows that I keep mentioning, like, can you guess what this camel toes is this? And they would show like pictures of camel toes <sighs> and Chen Kuger would try to guess. Wow. That does not sit well in today's climate. Do, do you want to see it? Like, do, do, are you aware of it? I, I, yeah, I wouldn't put it past them. And I okay. know that they, they're all sort of, you know, low key misogynist. Um, or at least frat bros. Like Jank is definitely a frat bro type guy. Well, the question is, why did they change? Yeah, I remember they used to have guests on that didn't agree with them. Yeah, Such Karen a simple Trump. concept. Yeah. Yep, they had uh, mm. Jared Taylor on. Jared Taylor completely annihilated uh, Gank. Mm. Uh, they, they had Sam Harris. I mean, Sam Harris might have been the last guy that was on of any prominence where there was an argument. It didn't go well for Gank. But it's a fundamental shift to change your strategy to say, I just, just want people to kiss my ass. That's it. Yeah. I think it's the Qatarian money that made them change. It's uh, the moment they started doing their deals with Al Jazeera. That's yeah. when everything went downhill. And you can notice a, a big change in the, the way they did things. Well, I was well aware of this deal they had with AJ+, Plus, <laughs> and it's shady as fuck, especially people who claim that they want money out of politics. But what about money in journalism? Surely that's just as corrupting an influence, but no, it's okay when they do it. But trust me, you know they, they're good people and they they do things for the right reasons. But I don't think AJ Plus <laughs> gives them that much money. It's, they're scrambling for money. They're begging. They're uh, no, yeah, viewers. but back then, back then they weren't. Like back then, uh, they they were a small YouTube channel that started growing and growing, and then they had this deal with AJ Plus, and at the time, it was an increase in funding for them. Well they were looking for another round of funding they wanted to go huge like they wanted to be the next cnn or you know a major player and they never got that funding mm. you know they, they had a few angel investors and whatnot but they have not come through the numbers don't stack up because during the 2016 election they got a bunch of views and they were skyrocketing and oh my god we're growing and growing they really aren't growing fast they've gained about a million subs in a couple years and they have every advantage with the algorithm. They're best buds with the YouTube people. They get promoted everywhere. And they still are not growing that fast. And I think I, I think they're losing subs recently. <laughs> well, losing them like like who? Monday and Matt? I mean, it's hard to lose subs. It takes effort for somebody to unsub from someone. But it it's worse than that. They're just a ghost town. I mean, they don't get a large percentage of views, which is what matters. Subs doesn't matter at all. Subs is fake. It's a fake number. It's an artificial number. By the way, you got to 100,000 subs, right? Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, no, I was congratulating Sargon for... <laughs> 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 um, congratulations on knowing Sargon. Is what I, was, I should rephrase that. Um, I'm well, just why do people keep saying that Sargon gave me the subs? You know who gave me the biggest boost ever? Who? Karen Strong. What is your relationship with her? Uh, the same with you. I talk with her online. But she came on my stream, and basically her presence on my stream got a lot of people to look at me. And I got covered in some MRAs, uh, websites, and stuff like that, because people started watching my channel. And uh, that's how I started growing. What is her appeal? Is she still pressing forward, or is she sort of a one-trick pony with the I'm a female anti-feminist? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I had her on and we talked about the hot topic of the month, um, whatever that was. Um, but I'm not really 
following her or knowing you know what, what she's doing she, she's got like some based opinions on politics on politics and certain subjects and that's what i appreciate mm. and she's conservative yeah yeah definitely i think i saw her on a panel at uh, the methcon and it was her versus another woman talking about feminism and they agreed on 95 percent of things they both seem to make a lot of sense yeah i mean uh, i've never heard her say anything that would make me go like well that's crazy yeah and that's fine um you know she's probably just a, a cool person i've not checked out her stuff right now i'm contemplating whether or not to have a discussion with richard spencer and all the i'm wondering let me put throw that to you would you have a discussion with him but i already had a discussion with him what was, uh, yeah like i was on the andy worst it was me with arch warhammer uh versus richard spencer and uh jf Gadeke. oh god so you, you frame it as verse why do you why are you in a combative stance oh. with him well, it's the ideology isn't it like he's uh I, well one of the things he was for that i disagreed is that he favors the european union he he likes the pan-european project he just doesn't like the people leading it and the way it's going but if you would get his people in charge of the EU, he thinks things will be better. He's treating the EU like the ring of power from Sauron, you know, it's like, if only I would have it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he's in favor of the white European Union specifically. And yeah, but <clears throat> wants to close all the borders and whatnot. Yeah, the, but the thing is, like, I don't think the people in Germany have Romania's best interest at heart or the people in France give a shit about uh, Liechtenstein. Yeah, you know, I'm more in favor of people from that region governing themselves rather than having people from far away dictate what the people in that region should do. But I mean, isn't the plan to collectivize when it is to your advantage when you're you know negotiating global trade deals or something, but not to you know make it some authoritarian rule from one small group? I mean, you're going to have regional control still. Yeah, but the thing with the EU is that it wants to expand more than economically. Uh, you know, like if it was just an open market thing, yeah, I'd be in favor of that. But it wants a military. It wants uh, the sovereignty of different nations to uh, concentrate its power. So, yeah, that that thing about the military, that reminded me of Star Wars, the prequel, when Senator Palpatine was like, we need an army for the Senate. And then they yeah. went out and recruited the stormtroopers like that was I mean, look at Article 13 and 11 coming from the EU. Like, that has nothing to do with the free market. You know, it's uh, uh, basically the people in the EU, they don't want to lose power. That's the thing they're most afraid of. So they want to silence everyone that's uh, talking against them. Um, and it's the, the whole idea, like, the moment people have so much power, they want to maintain it. And uh, they, they also have a plan for society, which is why they don't like populist uh, governments winning in Europe. Yeah, we have to be very wary of who has power because power has that you know tantalizing appeal. And even good people, you go in and you're kind of a good person, power just corrupts you. We know yeah. that's the trend. And so we have to be very cautious of who we put into that position. No, I, found Richard, the, I, I found the video with the young Turks with the, whose camel coat is this. Um, okay. Would you want to share it on the screen so people can uh, see it along with you? Because I, I can't do the sound properly. How can I share my screen? Um, well, first of all, make sure there's no porn, because I know you've got a lot of ladies uh, that are playing before your videos. And then you got like the share screen in the left um, corner. Wh why can't you do it? I don't know how to make the sound um, properly so that people can hear it. You sent me a link to this stream. Yes. But I, if I play it on my video, I don't know if people will be able to hear it properly. I, I know, but. It. You didn't send me the camel toe video. You sent me a link. Oh, to oh, oh, okay. So uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess the copy paste didn't work. All right. Uh, just give me a second. There I need camel. I will give you the camel. Did you? Ah, uh, there's camel. Oh, God. They're actually talking about it. They've, yeah. been on, they've been on air this long where they were doing a square format. Oh, yes. My. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, Mr. Angry for 20 Californian dollars, my two favorite YouTubers. <laughs> you got a fan. That's very strange. Uh, I would like to have a cross-examination on that guy. <laughs> what is his problem? <laughs> so this is from uh, 2009, actually. OK, I'm screen sharing. Can you see me? me... We got yes. Anna. God, what a rinky-dink set they had. Uh, mm -hmm. They got the, the Washington Monument behind them. That's cheesy as fuck. <laughs> Gank is about 
40 pounds less than he is now. Anna with a very phallic mic in front of her. <laughs> but but it's interesting that I actually had like some American monument behind them, like representation yeah. of American culture. Well, exactly. Because they're so counterculture and they're, they want a revolution. Oh, we got to talk about Brown Fabio too, by the way. But <laughs> um, so they, they are about politics. They're, they talk about American politics. They're all about that, but they don't like America. Yeah. They only would like America if they're in charge of America. And so that's why they have, it's very telling that their background that they've stuck with is the American flag unfurled or unraveled. And so it's just these strips of fabric. So it's like, we've just tore America apart, man. It's, I'm sure they contemplated putting the American flag upside down, but they thought, oh, that's associated with some like terrorist groups or, you know, we don't really want to do that, but let's rip the flag apart. All right. This video has almost a million views. Yep. It's some compelling content. That's that's an interesting analysis, by the way. Hmm. You you need to turn it up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna blast it as loud as possible. But really, the camel toe is visual. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess that is one of the byproducts of yoga pants. You know, <laughs> I don't. I'm not complaining. Do you, do you think? Let me ask you, V. Mm. Do, you, do you think a woman is embarrassed by camel toe? Depends on the situation. Like, if you're out of office and you're in an important business meeting, yeah, I think so. But, but the, th the thing is, all camel toe kind of looks the same, right? There's, unless you have some huge gaping crevasse, it's mm. not like you could. How could you possibly ID someone's camel toe based just off the toe? Well, the uh, Chen Kuger is trying to do. It. I, I think yeah. Anna actually managed to guess it, so maybe right. But th this isn't fair because you sh you see the whole body and you see this obscured face. Oh, so you're saying that if it was just the camel toe, I guess yeah, you're right. Yeah. What about showing nipples? So if you have an erect nipple as a woman, is that more embarrassing than a camel toe? I'm guessing yes. No, I'm guessing no. Well, the thing with these things is that men don't uh, get upset, but other women would get furious. So. How do you obscure your moose knuckle when you're in public? Well, you, you pull up your jeans a little bit and you, you make sure that it goes like somewhere like, like a belt sort of thing, you know, like it goes through the, the underwear and it goes uh, parallel to the leg. But have you ever worn sweatpants and it's sort of contouring the shape of your package? Um, not in a professional environment, no, but uh, it, it really depends. Like, uh, <laughs> That's right. I forget you're a doctor. I thought you were just a <laughs> professional D&D &D player. Um, yeah, if, if I'm playing D&D, &D, then I don't care. Oh, shit. It, how is that D&D &D group? Is it growing? Or, or yeah, you... apparently Sargon invited someone else, uh, invited another YouTuber, Rags, and he's so autistic that if one person can't make it, he calls it off. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, well, let's see who this chick is. You know what they should do is a U.S. Congress version of this with all the new females coming into power. Mm. They should uh, analyze all their camel toes. Do you think uh, it would be haram for the uh, new Muslim women to uh, have camel toes? Like, there's, I understand there's two Muslim women that are in the Senate. Yeah. One, uh, one is a Somali-American, I believe. Yeah. I just listened to a podcast about that, about the first day that they uh, selected the Speaker of the House, and everyone was wearing traditional garb. So you had a Native American who basically showed up barefoot wearing a dream catcher. And, you know, it was a big show, a big spectacle. I like it. I like the fact that we have a youthful new energy. Like these people seem to care. I like that. Now, I disagree with them on some positions, but, you know, politics is kind of a stagnant, fucked up, corrupt, disgusting thing. It's all fake. You know, I don't want some Stepford wife looking Mitt Romney guy controlling it by the way me and my dad were joking Mitt Romney we would take him in a split second over Trump and all that um yeah, I mean all, all of these guys Trump has made every single prior Republican seem like an angel I in mm. fact Nancy Pelosi quoted Ronald Reagan in her speech she gave in Congress and the entire house was like yay Ronald Reagan was great on immigration yeah and, you're not you're not a big a fan of Trump I understand um, oh god I, I love how you say that like it's a controversial position like oh man no no it's not it's just on my channel you know most people here including myself we, we like the US president and, oh uh, no 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 wait a minute wait a minute yeah. you are a literal Romanian you are a non-ironic yeah. Romanian 
Yeah. What you, you think it's good that we have a game show host, a reality star, a billionaire con man tycoon as the president who has no political experience and doesn't know what the fuck he's doing? Well, he's, as a yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, as well, a member of a country who's uh, neighboring Russia. I am happy that a woman that wanted to have a no-fly zone in Syria. Oh, you're still going on that? Wait a minute. Now, this is a record. I was just criticizing Trump, and what did V just do? He pivoted to Hillary Clinton. It's January 2019. V's still talking about Hillary Clinton. That's okay. fascinating. I'll, I'll talk about Trump. He pulled the troops out of Syria. Oh, so what? last week? What troops? We had barely any troops there. They were a, a small force. Yeah, but it also shows the uh, intention to disengage from that uh, conflict. Political stunt, disengage. Great. Okay, he hasn't gotten to war. Good job, Trump. You haven't blown up the planet yet. You, well, I'm happy because of that, yeah. Do you think he will be impeached? No. J just maybe not voted out, but at least the process is initiated, impeachment. Well, if they want Trump to win the next elections, then I hope he gets impeached, yeah. Oh my God! So here, here's a question: Why do you and Sargon spend your time, waste your time, talking about the leadership of a foreign country? I, I understand America's a big country. This has nothing to do with you guys. It doesn't of affect you. It does. Of course, no, it, it does. doesn't. Yeah, Why? Yeah. How? I just told you. Like for example, international politics regarding uh, military action. Like oh, I, I'm a member okay. of my, my country is a member of NATO. Right. So how many videos have you done on the president of China and the politics of China? I've done a couple. Not a lot. None. No, it's, it's because it's a lot more different to find out news from China um, because the, the the language barrier. It's a lot mm -hmm. easier to talk about the news coming from the U.S. because it's an English-speaking nation. Did I ever tell you the story that I thought of you differently after I visited Bulgaria? <laughs> Why to, is that? <laughs> I went to Bulgaria. I was thinking about dipping into Romania to fly home. And uh, we were by the sea. What sea is out there? The Black Sea? Black Sea, yeah. Yeah. And I was in a cab and it was a guy, I think he was Romanian, and he sounded just like you. The mm. same style of voice, the same piercing, shrill, like comically something. I would have thought you were a voice actor and you're doing an audition. But I was like, oh shit, V is not that unnormal. He's just a guy from this region. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? I mean, you sound like the people around you. Um, not really. I think I just have a squeaky voice by default, but uh, this is my accent, so I'm not trying to, to play a part or anything. Has your activity online and your association with Sargon and the other nerds in your clan, no, guild, uh, has that affected, have you noticed a shift in your accent over these past few years? Um, I haven't noticed, but I think it's there. Um, I would have to watch some of my older videos and then I'll be able to tell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if, if there's a shift, it's uh, probably very slow. And when it's slow, you don't notice it. Sometimes I notice that I'll pick up words that I've heard. And it's sort of depressing to me when I think, oh, Jesus, I said that because I heard that. It's so unoriginal. It's like, uh. All right, I'm, I'm hitting play out by this. All right. Well, I, I don't think people can hear it, but it's fine. Like the, the images are still speaking, even if it's at max. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I have the same problem. I don't know how to make sound uh, work. Um, but, but you can tell people what you're hearing. You, you can describe. Okay. I, I will give you. They're, he's asking, oh, God, you just talked about her breasts. He thinks it's Demi Moore. <laughs> it's so gross watching just this fat Muslim just talk about something. He's not shit. a Muslim. He's an atheist now. Do you know he's still an agnostic? He still hasn't grappled with what he is. A, oh. I'm a cult cultural Muslim. Oh, now we have to talk about the greatest of all cultural Muslims, Hassan Piker. <laughs> now, I know that you and Sargon have a hate boner for communists. And for the well, longest time, every you time you... Justified, like a little bit? Well, well, more for you, less for Sargon. Because you are from a country where in recent history, the communists played a major role. And your but proximity I don't understand to... this, this mentality. It's like just because you didn't experience it doesn't mean you can't see it's bad. Um, well, yeah, but I could see that the the rat infest rat infestation of Madagascar is bad, but it doesn't matter to me. I mean, yeah, but you can you can still like look at it and say, all right, I wouldn't want the rat infestation here, and if there's ways to prevent it, then I, I want to do it. Yes, I'm challenging the authenticity of this threat, especially if you're a tubby bitch in Swindon versus a guy in Romania. There's a difference there, and yet communism seems to be your 
trigger word. You guys hate the communists. And I, every time you would say it, I'd be like, what are you guys doing? This is like some ancient philo you know, ideology that is not relevant anymore. But now I'm seeing it pop up more and more to the point where, and I think this is a major shift, Brown Fabio is just openly saying he's a communist. Yeah. We have a communist on a major news outlet in America. But promoting. It makes, it makes yeah. sense. Well, now I agree. And now I think it should be just absolutely bitch slapped. And the thing with communism, this is what I don't get right. Everyone is going to point out, and rightfully so, that Nazism is a dangerous ideology because it commits genocide based on ethnicity. And then you have communism, which is against Nazism, but it promotes genocide based on class. So why is one ideology uh, you know, uh, shamed by people, and rightfully so, and the other one get, gets a free pass? And you get people yeah. working at Google that proudly display the black flag or the hammer and sickle on their avatars. Yeah, Nazism is not public. It's not mainstream in any way. It's completely fringe. You're never going to get a guy in the Young Turks going, yeah, yeah, I'm a Nazi. I'm a national socialist. <laughs> but, yeah, much. yeah, but somehow communism has a new uh, coat of paint on it. It's been rebranded. Huh? And what's crazy is that Brown Fabio is an advocate of violence. So is it? Yeah, I mean, he's Antifa. The guy is pro-Antifa. He wants a violent revolution. This is, he disagrees with Noam Chomsky. He disagrees with Kal Kalinsky. He disagrees with his uncle. They don't want violent, violence. Those guys are all peaceful, but he wants the violence. You know what I love about Chen So it's Kuger? interesting that- <clears throat> every, every time they talk about uh, socialism and Chen Kuger is usually like, hey, democratic socialism. <laughs> but the moment they get to the violence part, the moment, you know, it's like, let's, let's get that, you know, smash the 1%. Chen Kuger is like, whoa, 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 capitalism good. Capitalism good. And I think it's because deep down inside, he knows he's the 1%. I know. I mean, millionaires <laughs> against capitalism is, is a very odd place to be. And yeah, what's up with Sargon having this whole debate over whether or not Nazism is a leftist ideology? He's, he seems to be going back and forth with a bunch of people. Um, th there's different schools of thought. Um, do, do you want me to get into it? Well, it, no, it's, it's kind of, I, I kind of get the point, but it's not important how you define the ideology. I mean, there are certain aspects of it that make it bad, namely the violence part of it. Like, and that that's a binary that's important. Are I think it's the state worship that people don't like, you know, it's when the state gets to decide your future and your destiny and you're not in control of it anymore. That's, yeah. that's the main part. And there are different ideologies that empower the state to such a degree that you as a person have no say in the future of your life. Like you, you just have to follow whatever the party says, don't question it, do everything that the party is telling you to do. Um, and th this is like wh when people are uh, pointing out that, you know, so much authoritarianism is wrong and they don't want to, to live in such a country. Mm. Yeah, it's an odd, I mean, it's really not even a useful conversation because there's more nuanced ones we should be having like we should be taking the best parts of Europe and putting them in America and vice versa, because both of these regions, you know, they're not doing it exactly right. So Europe needs the freedom of speech. Um, America needs legalized prostitution. And we all, need, <laughs> <laughs> we all need a digital bill of rights. Yeah. Because, I mean, you need to, you need to tax those boobies, you know? Yeah. And instead we're talking about, Hey, is Nazism and communism, are they bad? Let's go after those guys. No, let's, move forward not backwards that's the whole it's frustrating it feels like a waste of time to me hmm. it, and, and that it's like the second layer of it adds insult to injury when someone is wrong they're not only wrong they're wasting our time we're discussing that, shit that shouldn't even be discussed juggernaut demon for five dollars says v we all know you think trump is a moron your pandering of trump just because your audience has mostly trump fans is very disingenuous oh. Oh. I, I disagree with this. Um, the thing is, like, if I was a Hillary supporter like you, my, oh, fans, Jesus. Would still, my, my fans would have still stuck with me. Um, they they would minute. say I'm an idiot, I guess. But uh, yeah. you're gonna tag me with the Hillary label? How about I don't get a job? Are, are you ashamed of it? Are you ashamed? You you support no, Hillary? I'm, All right. I'm mar I'm marveling at the fact that the word Hillary keeps coming across your lips. I'm an Obama guy. Why can't you call me an Obama guy? Right. So, so Hillary and an Obama guy. Well, no, I'm Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders. If any of these people run, I'm voting for them. I'm a Democrat. It's, it shouldn't be that shocking. I mean, it's not. I don't have a boner for Hillary Clinton. I, it I is Bill shocking Clinton. in a well, way. How about, Bill, 
How about Bill? I voted for Bill. I like Bill. What's wrong with Bill? Rape culture, hashtag me too. You know, like what, what I don't get about this is that, and, and I find it very funny. One of the biggest talking points of the Democrats is the uh, identity politics. And your channel is entirely dedicated against identity politics. Yes. So isn't that like a little bit ironic? Like, isn't there a little bit of a controversy over there? Um, so are you telling me that my, my party and my candidates aren't perfect and that I might have a disagreement with one of them? What? Yeah, I, I don't see you promoting the democratic agenda on your channel. No. Um, well, well, yes, I, I'm all in favor of it. I'm very actually interested in this new green deal that they're talking about. Hmm. Like, I think that's an aggressive uh, bit of legislation that's actually taking global warming seriously. And no, because I, I find it interesting. Like, don't get me wrong. It's not that what you're doing is, is bad or that I disagree with it. It's just that it's very interesting for a person that supports the Democrats to just constantly make talking points against them. Yeah, um, well, yes, this is very easy to understand. They are my side of the aisle. I want them to be better. Yeah, so it makes sense. No, it makes sense. It's just yeah. that there's very few people like you that are doing what you're doing. Well, but think of what a waste of time it would be for me to try to improve the Republican Party. That's not my party. You know, I disagree with them on a million things. So my disagreements with the Democrats <laughs> are far less, and mm -hmm. I still I still feel it's significant, but not in terms of policy as much. The policies I line up you know, but here's my point. Enough of this. Where are you on the left and right? Who cares? The issues are more important. Nobody cares where Devin Tracy lines up. Who cares? I'm one vote. What does it matter? You know well, what I'm saying? Yeah, like people would say you're a public influencer. Like maybe there's someone that watched your video and uh, you changed their sure. mind. Yeah. A minor, a minor public. Yeah, to some degree, that's true. And so we're almost like avatars. You know, YouTubers can be symbolic, and that's why the bigger ones, I feel, have more responsibility. Because people are so easily influenced. Holy God, it, it's sad. It, I mean, you know how advertising works so damn well? You see an ad for Domino's Pizza, and like the next thing you know, you're ordering a Domino's Pizza. I mean, this is what's happening all the time. We are, we're just like lambs. We're Muppets. We're just controlled by whatever is in front of our face. Humans are not that sophisticated in the end. And to me, it's like, it depresses me because... I don't know. I think, you know what it is? Here's why it depresses me, because I don't think I'm any different. I think I can be easily influenced by what I'm seeing. Because yeah, we, I think it's uh, different degrees. Like the, the whole thing with uh, me, for example, is that I grew up in an education that tried its best to teach me how to think, not mm. what to think. Yes. And I, I think that's an incredible skill. Um, higher education is the art of teaching you how to educate yourself. And actually, yeah. the, the first thing you do when you get to college is basically unlearn everything you thought you knew because you learned a very surface, shallow understanding of, like, say, world history. Um, now, you put in a sniping little snarky comment about Bill Clinton being a rapist. Do you think, do you believe that? I thought you were sort of a listen and don't believe kind of guy. You oh, believe was, that he uh, actually lived it, it, it was mostly as a joke. Um, but, okay. you know, like, it, until the jury finds the defendant guilty, I have to give him the presumption of innocence. Uh, but if you ask like my public opinion, like what, what I personally think, uh -huh. uh, yeah, I, I, I do think. Uh, <laughs> okay, so but, you think, you, you don't think it was a situation where a man who had charm and charisma and power met a woman, he wanted her, you know, we know he has a libido. They hooked up and then he sort of brushed her off and she became bitter about it and then reframed it as, I was raped. You don't think that's more no, likely? I, I wasn't talking about uh, what, what was her name, Monica. No, no, not Monica. We're talking about the girl from before that. Yeah. I mean, all um, of this was well, consensual. It, it could be like Harvey Weinstein, you know, like he also had a lot of power and you can say he had charisma. And uh, it, it's still the, in, in that case, the right. power dynamic, you know, like you're, you're a person in a position of power and you can just do it. And a lot yeah, of people seem to be able to. I still think that consent is consent. And I, I just think using the word rape, I know you were joking in your, this case, yeah. but like, using the word rape puts you in with dudes who are just jacking women in alleys. You know, so I, I just, I don't know, like I'm still in the aftermath of the whole Brock Turner thing. And mm -hmm. I find that to be just, I did a couple of videos on it and I actually don't think he did a single thing wrong. Brock Turner, 
is I, I don't know who Brock Turner is. I'm afraid a Stanford swimmer, um, 19 years old, raped a girl. The, the, the story is he raped an unconscious woman by a dumpster. Ah, does that ring a bell? No, no. Yeah. Um, let's let's change the subject a little bit. Got got a little bit gloomy over here. We know you got we got talking about Democrats and immediately we go to rape. Um, what do you think about Bolsonaro? I know very a limited amount about him. I've uh, watched a couple videos. I know some of his stances. Um, oh, yeah, how about I, mean, I play you a clip from him and then we can comment? Okay. Let's see if I. It's it's a clip that I played on my channel. Uh, I believe three times now. I, I just find it really interesting because uh, it uh, upsets a lot of people, and um, I think uh, I think you'll find it very interesting. Let me let's see if I can do the sound properly. All right, I can. So I'll I'll share my screen in a bit. Okay. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. And can you hear it? Yep. All right. Put it full screen now. A retaguarda jurídica e policial poder trabalhar se matar alguém. Foda-se. É só você não estuprar, não sequestrar, não praticar latrocínio que tu não vai estar lá, porra. Ah, mataram 60 mil. Eu queria que matasse 200 mil vagabundos. Não estão preocupados com a segurança pública, achando como mocinha, como marica. Um dia a polícia vai parar, e não é por salário, não. Ele tem família, tem esposa, ele é um cidadão. Se atira no vagabundo, vou para cadeia. Se não atiro, vou para o cemitério. Tem uma vida atrás daquela parte, não dou bola para essa vida. Atirou com a intenção de matar, lógico que atirou com a intenção de matar, porra. Ele está com o fuzil na mão, é para fazer carinho? Não, Falar que esse cara aqui está saltando isso aqui, mas cultura. Ele precisa de pancada e de punição rigorosa. Eu, caso da presidência, ele é daltônico. Eu sou uma mesma coisa. Ele é racista. Racista é o caralho, porra! Ele 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 é o caralho, you know, human rights that aren't actually human rights, but they're they're making them up. Like um, misgendering a trans person is. Uh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. It's an interesting series of clips. The guy doesn't <laughs> clearly doesn't give a fuck and uh, <laughs> speaks in a very brash tone. Um, you know, I don't. It, it's like you were saying about China. There's a language barrier, so it's hard to assess a guy when you've never heard him give a speech. Um, and I wouldn't dream to do that and i have no idea a what the issues facing brazil are and b what the options are in terms of policy strategies mm. as but, i understand it is uh mostly about corruption like that's why people voted mm. because the other candidates were incredibly corrupt so it might be more about economics rather than social issues but uh yeah. most of the press is livid about social issues so this is why you keep hearing him come out yeah. in the press regarding gay rights and stuff like that i can see that any figurehead becomes a good target and they kind of straw man the guy. I could see that happening, um, especially if the guy is brash and not politically correct. But Brazil faces real problems. You know, they have major disparities in wealth and major crime problems. And so having a strong guy actually take action, some of the stuff he was talking about in terms of killing thugs and dealing with the criminal element, I could see that as being an attractive thing to people who are just sick of the shit. 
You know, yeah, I mean, Brazil got sixty three thousand people killed last year alone. The yeah, murder rate is just astonishing. You know, like people want something to be done about it. And, and the fact that it's all normalized. So whatever the situation is in the favelas or in the super poor regions is just accepted as that's the way it is in those places. Whereas, you know, maybe maybe it's time to go through and change strategy and actually deal with the problem. It's difficult to do though, man. I mean, talking about the politics of different countries, I remember I saw Vincente Fox give a speech once, the former president of Mexico, and he, he was proud of the fact that 70% or 65% of his country had electricity or access to television or something. He's like, mm. he listed that as one of the accomplishments of his administration. And yeah, it's like, and it's, it's interesting to see the previous administration, how much electricity they had. Yeah. Why have you taken an interest in Brazilian politics and this guy? Because it's in the news. It's just bombarding you in the news and you, you can't, you know, open any of the newspapers without seeing him. And I think that he's being straw man really hard. Um, yeah. And I just wanted to look into it and see what's going on and talk with some Brazilians about it. It's funny because in Brazilian culture, he is a white guy, essentially. You know, he's a, a light-skinned guy of European descent. And so that alone is enough to sort of make people enraged and assume the worst on anything he says. I mean, initially I was like, okay, so he's racist, but Brazil is not... Um, um, monolithic white nation, and the fact that he got elected means that uh, non-white people had to vote for him, so he can't be that bad. Well, when was the last time they had a non-white president in Brazil? Is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, you, you might have a point there. Um, the thing with Brazil is that the, the first time I heard about it is that when the FIFA Cup took place, mm -hmm. they built like this massive stadium, just this, this enormous construction that costed a lot of money and it caused a lot of people to be enraged in the government because um, obviously you know your nation is poor and you're able to afford this monstrosity um, and to top it off like Brazil lost really bad versus Germany in that uh, championship. That's that was <laughs> yeah that was definitely a milestone of yeah that was an incredible game though Germany played so well have you ever been down there? No no I, I only been to England you should head over there, man. It's incredible. When I, I was down, she is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. It's like, <laughs> it's like the ground zero for major ass. When I was down there though, I noticed that a lot of the talk show hosts, all the popular um, TV personalities, they tended to be lighter skinned, like white variant uh, variant mm -hmm. sorry, of um, Brazilians. So there is their, they have their own colorism vibe going on there. I don't think it's probably as crazy as it is in America, especially right now. But I think the inter look after twenty years of the internet. I think the internet plus race relations was a terrible idea. <laughs> like, I, I, they I, actually have a reverse race relation there in America. Like there's this documentary that I saw, mm -hmm. and they're talking about this painting uh, that's made of an artist, and it has like this black grandmother with uh, a whiter son, and uh, uh, he's married with with another woman, and they're they're holding like a white baby. And the whole thing is that apparently there's a culture in Brazil that you need to marry a white guy in order to have white kids. So if you're a black woman, it's actually a social good to marry white people. I'll, I'll have to find that documentary yeah. again. Like it was just a bewildering way of thinking. That's just like what? <laughs> well, it, it does make you think. Looking at Brazil is a good way to reflect on what unites us and what divides us. Um, for example, down there, having a big ass is an asset. <laughs> uh, right uh, but they all enjoy and look they seek that big ass it, whether they're black or brown or white like when i was down there you'd see advertisements the mannequins i used to take pictures of the mannequins the biggest ass mannequins you've ever seen in your life murals on the wall and it so starkly contrasts what you see in western you know white countries where the, the objective is to not be big it's you got to be as thin as possible but so you got language you got portuguese you got the love of big ass you got these cult, soccer the love of soccer this unites all of them and the question is is that enough to overcome our racial tribal instincts that's the battle well i think there's always going to be racial tribal instincts and if there's not there's going to be ethnical ones um 
but you get like the default state where there's friction and then you get ideologies that try to remove those mm -hmm. frictions and you get the ideologies that try to uh, accelerate those frictions and make them mm -hmm. worse. Right, and we need to call those people out to say, are you a person who is trying to divide, trying to inflame, or are you trying to unite? Like, wh where is your, what's your motivation? Because people get a pass too often. They divide, they intentionally divide the races and they act like they're doing a good thing. Yeah, and even even if you would have like a racial monolith, you still have ideologies like communism that divide people based on class. Like if you want to divide people, there's so many ways you can do it. You just find mm -hmm. like some some ideology that works, that fits, and you push that. Right. So it's really, it's not even about race. It's about otherizing. It's about scapegoating. Find a distinction. About, yeah, I mean, it's about gaining power most of all. And... Um, the, the good, uh, you know, like the cool thing about communism and these uh, ideologies is that you can always blame the other and you don't have to fix the problem. So, for example, when it was with Stalin, you get a famine in Russia. If you read um, The Harvest of Sorrow, you get to see that there's a famine in Russia. Well, he blames the counter-revolutionaries. Like, there's always this other group that is responsible and, mm -hmm. you know, you can alleviate the wrath of the people to that other group rather than to the government. Yeah, I think it goes back to our competitive nature <clears throat> as a species. We enjoy competing against other people like us. And this was highlighted for me. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, do you play against the computer in chess? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I said, no. A, the computer is fucking impossible to beat. But also B, there's no satisfaction to it if I were to beat a computer. You know, there's actually these um, chess championships where, like, people build a computer to fight another com against another computer. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I've seen them. Do um, you like them? I love that. I've watched analysis of those matches. There's a new computer on the scene. Um, <laughs> there's a new it's, computer. It's, yeah, it's called like uh, Alpha Zero or no, I forget. But it take it took on the previous great chess engine, which is called Stockfish, and it kicks its ass. It just knows how to beat Stockfish. Hmm. And it's very strange because the computer thinks in a different way than a human. I mean, it's recognizable. Yeah. I've seen grandmasters playing online streaming, and they're playing a guy, and they suspect he's using an engine because they they don't recognize the way his strategies. They don't. It's it's too deep. It's too crazy, and so they think, okay, this guy's cheating. <laughs> I mean, are you a chess man yourself? Uh, I, I'm not the chess man, but I know a little bit about chess. Like, for example, I know that once you leech Grandmaster, it becomes very boring because it's the same old strategies over and over. I don't think Grandmasters would say that, but yeah, there is some degree of truth to that. Uh, you just have to take on better guys. And here's the other factor, the time. So a lot of the Grandmasters are now, especially the younger guys, are going to blitz games. So like three mm. minutes or less, one minute games. And a fascinating fact about the best player in the world, Magnus Carlsen, who's you know 27 years old, he's the best at long form chess, like hours and hours and hours, and he's also the best at one minute chess. So the guy mm -hmm. is a complete package, just a, a devastating brain for this sort of thing. So and, are you are you experienced at chess? Like, are you really good at it? I'm pretty good. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty good. I'm but you have to be humble because you know, I know there's thousands and thousands who are better than me, but I've gotten progressively better over the past couple of years. And I, I just have an interest in it. It's intellectually stimulating to me. I think in the similar way that YouTube is for guys like you and I, we're not here to teach makeup and to show our cat. We're here to talk about ideas and to sort of get the juices flowing in the old noggin. And that's what chess does way more than a shoot 'em up way more than like Fortnite or some shit. Well, but then why don't you play Dungeons and Dragons? Because that you, you get like a list. Yeah, but, <laughs> but here's the thing: you get a list of two hundred spells, right? And you get to pick uh, some and try to min max the character. I love it. I love you. I love you. <sighs> the fact that you just went from I love chess to then why don't you play Dungeons and Dragons? Well, it's self refuting. It, Dungeons and Dragons is not chess. It's not. It's no, but not, then you you made like you you like chess because it puts mm. your mind at work, and I'm mm. explaining that Dungeons and Dragons also requires a lot of thought behind creating a character. No, it, it requires role playing, and and you no. get to do a little sketch comedy thing. It's even, just even without the role play, right? Like for example, you can think you you got like thirty feats that you need to take, and you have to decide which one of those would make your character more powerful and why. And try to to min max the game oh, for you to get an advantage. 
I refuse to understand what you just said, min max. I don't get that. But okay, <laughs> the, the, the equivalent would be if I'm playing a game of chess and it's my turn to move, and I say, okay, let me roll the dice to see what move I do next. Like, yeah, but that's, that's part of it, right? Like, how do you make the things that you can control so that regardless of the outcome of the dice, you still get an advantage? Right. There's a degree of skill to Dungeons and Dragons. I will grant yes. you that. Or, or, for example, a card game, right? Like, if you play Magic the Gathering, you got over 2,000 cards, and you only need to make a deck of 40 cards, sorry, 60 cards, out of those 2,000. And it yeah, needs, but... yeah, it needs to be a good deck so it can beat others with it. All I'm saying is that the skill involved in that game is eclipsed by the LARPing aspect of just dicking around with your friends. Also, the Dungeon Master, he just makes what, up whatever he wants. Yeah, to be fair, I, I do agree that Sargon does make up whatever he wants. <laughs> he does. Yeah, I, I never used to Dungeon Master, but I did play Dungeons & Dragons back in the day. Um, mm -hmm. in the, so you don't know what Min Max is? I don't know. Is, is that a Dungeons & Dragons term? No, it's um, a term used in uh, video games. It's when you <laughs> when, when you pick things that are the best for your characters rather than things that are fun. Mm. Okay, yeah, I'm proud to not know that term. I'm going to educate you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> My so, channel, you're going to know everything there is to know. You're not a huge gamer guy, though. I am. I, am. I I started my channel as a gaming channel. Have you evolved? Are you playing the newest games? Yeah, I'm. I'm trying uh, to uh, you know keep up with the times now. Why Why aren't you on Twitch? I don't have tits. <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, so, but so um, you, would Would you give me a super chat if I flaunt my tits on Twitch? I, I do it for just cleavage. I don't need a full tit drop. Mm, um, so like uh, an amazing atheist type of cleavage. I just had a back and forth with him on Twitter the other day. <laughs> um, I wonder what he's up to. He's. I think he's doing well, actually. I think he's got a girlfriend, and he's he's back in Louisiana. Um, I think his channel's doing relatively well, and I think he's got that podcast going with those hillbillies. Mm. Have you thought about getting into podcasting ever? Uh, no, 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 no. Here's the thing that I noticed about YouTube, and especially people in my uh, profession and, and our, actually, like the political commentary sphere. Uh, everyone, like, wants to be big. It's like, oh, I want to have a million subs. I want to have two million subs. I want to have podcasts, and I want to have a website. The bigger you are, mm -hmm. the more attention you get. The more attention you get, mm. the more likely is that the mainstream media writes an article and then YouTube takes you down. So there, I'm very yeah. happy where I am. You know, 100,000 subs with, with a little stream that I bore 400 people watching, I am perfectly okay with it. I don't want more. I think that's a very zen of you. And there's wisdom in what you've said. And I think you base that primarily off your watching and witnessing of what has happened to Sargon in recent years. Times. It's not, it's not just Sargon. It's a lot. Like, did you see what happened to this guy, Mom, Mumkey, Mumsy, Mum, Mum, Mumford and Sons? Mumkey, I think. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Um, he was making like funny YouTube videos. I mm -hmm. think it was like something about Elliot Rogers or something like that. And uh, he gets like three community strikes and he's just gone. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, we that example. The depressing thing is that we were used to YouTube doing this. It's the fact that every other group and company is now on board with the same policies. Patreon was just the, the last straw. Like, I, it gets really difficult. Like right now, I'm happy with YouTube. I mean, I've got my channel restored. Mm -hmm. They're not perfect, but at least they're trying to have some sort of appeal process. Talk to a human being. It's obviously a difficult task, but you've never had your channel deleted, right? I did. Oh yeah. Yeah. Was it was restored? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just, it's a wrestling match. And what, what sucks is I don't think they realize we don't want to violate their terms. Like, we can argue about what the terms are. Yeah, but I agree. It's like they act like we're intentionally violating the terms. Yeah, and that, right. that, that's just, it, it's a shitty move that they do there. Um, and, and the Patreon thing has been <laughs> a, alarming. And I, I couldn't believe what they did to Sargon. I assume that he's gotten his funding back and he's doing well. Uh, but. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing with Patreon is that they um, didn't do things like this because they used to have competition. Like, they had the Hatreon. Now, I'm not into rape culture, but if you name your uh, business Hatreon, you, you have it coming. Um, I disagree with what happened to them, but, you know, they got taken down. And then you had the, what was the other one? 
uh, not subscribe star, but um, th there was like another competitor to Patreon, mm -hmm. and that got taken down as well. Uh, and once Patreon is the only one on the market, then they start deciding, okay, we don't like Milo, fuck off. We don't like Sargon, fuck off. And it's not going to end there, you know, obviously. Like they, they're eventually going to start um, choosing the people they don't like and kick them off. Meanwhile, they have actual communists and people advocating for revolution. So, you know, like clearly the laws are not uh, enforced properly. So Patreon wants to become a business that funds far left extremists. That is where their leanings are. And yeah, this is where it gets hardcore because, you know, if Steve Shives says you're hateful, you're a hateful <laughs> person, you use hate speech, that's one thing. What does it matter? A couple yeah. hundred people are going to leave nasty comments about you. If the guy running Patreon says that, now you have no money. So, I mean, money matters. And this is why, this is why it's not frivolous to have the discussion on things like hate speech. And oh, but, but but like what's interesting is that the mainstream media treats uh, a deplatforming from a major social media as if it's a criminal record. Like you, you should watch <laughs> when the mainstream media talks about the personality, about the right wing personality. They always say it's like, oh, yeah, Sargon of a cop who got deplatformed from Twitter. Like they use it as if it's, uh, you know, a criminal record. Yeah, yeah. I, I can definitely think that businesses for example, can uh, look into your social media and say, oh, why don't you have a Facebook account? You know, oh, I got banned from face speech. Like that might influence someone's uh, future. And people oh. were laughing when I said this. And then there was a case about a university and a student apparently was a top A student, but he didn't get uh, accepted in the university because he followed Alex Jones on Twitter. And it's like, come on, that's insane. <laughs> he could have been hate following him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is highly alarming god yeah there was a guy in germany who won apparently against facebook like um, he posted a victor orban quote and uh -huh. facebook banned his account for hate speech so the guy sued facebook in germany saying that uh, they're slandering him because hate speech is illegal in germany and they're basically calling him a criminal right. uh, and they have to prove that it's hate speech so facebook actually reinstated his account huh. wow yeah germany's so backward with that stuff one of the things I've been hearing recently is this whole notion that Gavin McInnes is a, a racist and he is in charge of a hate group. And I mean, the Proud Boys, the idea that the Proud Boys are a white supremacist hate group, that is false. And that does matter. And yet you still hear that being, people say that all the time. Like, it's just, oh no, it's true. It's like, oh. I mean, the Department of Justice doesn't label them as such. Yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. The next phase is, it's not even who is a hate group and who isn't a hate group. It's who is determining who are hate groups and who. Yeah, it's usually the mainstream media and the who? Southern Poverty Law Center that's doing that. Right, and so how discredited are those groups, or you know, how can we, how can we wake people up? How can you shake them and say, look, think independently for a second. Don't just take these people's at their word. They're lying. This is wrong. I mean, with the Proud Boys, from what I can tell, and, and I'm not very informed on this subject, but. You can make the argument that they're like street thugs and, you know, they, they try to go and, and have a fight or whatnot, but that doesn't make them white supremacists. Like, you can be a street thug without Wait, being a, a white supremacist. Yes, yeah, so with the key difference of their violence is defensive. Apparently, there was like a recording that came out which shows that there is one conflict that they initiated. There's one that was recently put out i don't think they i think maybe the video starts where it might appear that they initiated but in general obviously you might have bad apples here and there but mm. they are not going with the purpose of violence i mean half these guys bring shields remember those guys at charlottesville that brought shields yeah shields that's not an offensive weapon you're not chucking them like you're captain america you're trying to defend against antifa i mean i i'm willing to you know just so sometimes it's good to seed ground and give the argument to the other person. It's like, even if they weren't the ones initiating the violence, right? Because then you, you get into technicality. But even if they were the ones initiating the violence, that doesn't make them white supremacists. That's you, true. You, you can yeah. still have like a violent group, like a violent biker gang or something like that, that's into street thuggery and they just enjoy getting violent, but that doesn't make them ideologically inclined to, to be white supremacists. You know, people muddy the waters when it comes to language. And they do it intentionally. Take the word terrorism. Remember, we had this uh, scourge of Muslim acts of terror for the past, you know, decades. And so the word terrorism is 
you know, that's around a lot. And so what did the people on the far left try to do? They tried to say other stuff is terrorism. You know, uh, Dylan Roof, arguably what he did was terrorism, but there's a bunch of people. They just throw in and try to make it, uh, you know, America, we're the biggest terrorists. America, you know, because we bombed a country once. So they try to eradicate the meaning of the word. Yeah, I mean, terrorism is violence in order to achieve political ends. Yeah. Like but, I mean, it, it's take, you have to, like, whack-a-mole every time people use it when it's not appropriate. Yeah. And it, it gets just tiring because they don't care. It's not like people will find, they'll be like, look, I heard, I saw that video you did and uh, you were right. You were right. I was wrong on that. I apologize. I changed my stance. Let me make a public apology. No, they don't need to do that. Their fans don't care. They don't care if they're right or wrong. They just want to be, feel important and feel like they're a good person. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. So I got the 200 pen. I don't know what pen is, but it's red, so it's probably right. I'm a Brazilian. We were tired of the corrupt leftist government with all the socialist policies that impoverished the poor even more to be able to control elections. They forgot Brazil is a majority Catholic and conservative country, and we did have two presidents of gypsy descent. Oh, gypsy he descent. He didn't gypsy just send that to, to make you feel good about yourself? But I'm not a gypsy. You know, like a lot of people think I am. I'm actually white. Yeah, but you're close enough. Uh, you're in the same gene pool. No. You're telling me your great aunt is not a gypsy? Yes. I'm telling you my white people got a couple of slaves from Italy, right? And then they freed them, I don't know, like 400 years ago, I think. And that's you, the population in me. Would you be willing to take a 23 and me? Yes. Do you think there's any Ashkenazi Jew in you? No. African descent? Probably that 1%. But I don't think I can uh, use an Elizabeth Taylor on it and call myself African. Uh huh. Do you take any stock? Are you prideful at all about your racial heritage? No. Don't give a shit. Yeah. What are you most proud of? My accomplishments. The fact that I finished two universities and that I started a YouTube channel. Also, that one, the one time you rolled that 20-sided dice and it came out with a big number, that was pretty good. Yeah, I wanted to say that the fact that I managed to get into Platinum in League of Legends last season, that was good. Where does getting 100,000 subs rank in your life accomplishments? I'm not putting it quite high up, um, but I'm not going to say it's not an accomplishment because it was hard work. And, you know, it's like building a castle of cards. You, you finish building it and then you look at it and it's like, huh, that's nice. Yeah. I what is... What is the direction of your channel this year? Do you, have you recalibrated? Do you want to try new avenues? I don't want to <coughs> keep growing, to be honest. Like I, I don't want to reach uh, really high numbers. The the only thing is that I don't want to fall. Like I don't want to lose subscribers. Um, so if I, if I remain where I am now, I'm very happy. You have enemies. You have the Sargon backlash enemies, and who are these guys? Like on the on the right. So you have enemies to the right of you. I assume they're enemies on the far left of you, but are you concerned about these people at all? Or are you just sort of like, whatever, that's just the nature of the beast. Every, if you talk online, you have enemies basically. Yeah. I reached the conclusion that if you talk online, you're, you're going to get people that just want to screw with you. Uh -huh. um, hopefully I learned how to manage the situation and uh, it's, it's going to be better than how I used to manage it. Nice. But you got, you got enemies as well. Like you, you cool. managed to get a video that showed the ass of Jesus Nazareth, <laughs> the, the ass of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And because of that, you got a strike. Like that doesn't happen because of an algorithm. Like someone who hates you like that video and they know that it wasn't your intention to corrupt kids with the ass of Jesus Christ. So yeah. how, how do you think you, you got to that? Like who do you think... Uh, yeah, it's people who don't like me. I mean, it's the people who dislike my videos before they have started. Like mm. I go, I have premieres. I, I premiere a video and I have dislikes just sitting there waiting for me. Uh, I have old school enemies. I have like religious people. Every once in a while, I'll just chuckle, uh, <laughs> smuckle, because a religious person would be like, yeah, atheism is not unstoppable. What the fuck? Fuck you. You're going to hell. That's like but some old school. Change your name then? Like uh, yeah. from atheism is unstoppable, like get the new YouTube handle or something? Uh, if I if I could do it in reverse, yeah, I'd probably have a different name. That, but you, that, you can still do it now. Like you can change your name to Devon Tracer or something. Yeah, it's probably a bad move. Um, just keyword wise, I'm yeah. I'm stuck. I'm stuck with it. Why but, brand awareness or what? Yeah, just merch awareness. Mm. Um, I, Devon Tracy, it says nothing. 
It's... Well, why not bold mass peaks? Like that would be a great. Uh... <laughs> Let's see, bold, <laughs> bold, bold what? Bold man speaks. Oh, bald man speaks. Um, it has a potential. I'll put. I'll workshop it. We'll see what we got. You no, sell I mean t-shirts with bald man speaks. Then I'll buy one. I actually am gonna talk more about atheism a little bit because hmm. that was a very interesting topic, and it's still very prevalent. That your super chat just talked about how Brazil is completely Catholic, and it is. It's insane. Like you see these UFC fighters after every time they win a fight, they're like, "Praise Jesus!" You know, like they have tattoos of fucking. You know, as, as an atheist, I start to appreciate religion. Oh, God, you're one of these Jordan Peterson yeah. types? Yeah. No, not Jordan Peterson type. Like, I still don't believe anything about it. What do you um, appreciate? Yeah, it's uh, the fact that it instills some values in society that uh, can't be challenged that easily. And it's a lot diff more difficult for postmodernists to try to um, yeah, but the, corrupt, the corrupt people with their ideology. Yeah, but the religion doesn't instill the values. It's the people who interpret the religion arbitrarily. Yeah. They're the yeah. ones that insert the values. No, you're right. Yeah. But it's still better than the values that... Like, here, here's the thing, right? If I get like a, a full-blown Marxist in charge of the government, then when I say Marxist, I mean like a progressive who believes that everyone should be equal, who believes that every company should have 50-50 uh, representation. Uh, he believes that uh, transgender ideology should be taught to five-year-olds. You know, he believes in hate speech laws and all that. I don't share any of his worldviews. I, I disagree with him a hundred percent. So how is it different than if a religious person is in office? And I also d disagree with him and his worldviews a hundred percent. Well, yeah, not all worldviews are equally dangerous. That's why a very watered down, cheerful, um, Mormon-esque, you know, vision of Christianity. You know, it, it, there's some places where it's going to be harmful, but not the bulk of things. It's it's sort of a mitigating factor. It's uh, you know, but here's what I I think people just they don't want to have independent thought. It takes a lot of time and energy to think about every goddamn issue on your own, and so that's why people not even will look to religion. They'll look to the Constitution. You know, they'll say, oh yeah, the Constitution is an amazing document. It's perfect. It's immaculate. Let's I just defer to that. And then if somebody says, wait a minute, the guys who wrote that were deeply flawed. They were slave owners. So should we not go through it again and be like, let's make sure they were correct about all these things. Hashtag the second amendment, you know? So, but people don't really want to do that. They just trust. This is what we were taught to do as babies. You trust your parents. They tell you what's what. I think people like uh, the pattern, you know, they, they go to work, they come, they, they make money, they come home, they purchase the groceries, spend time with their kids and go to bed. Yeah. And as, as long as you don't fuck with the ritual, people won't bother you. But the moment also, they start inter, uh, intervening in their you know, little pattern, then they get upset. Yeah, and also there's this thing about what does the group say? Defer to the group. And there's many social reasons why that makes sense. Because if you stick out from that group, uh-oh, <coughs> you're a target, and now your livelihood might be in danger. So really, you got to just get in with the flock. And so that's why it's important to change the critical mass, like get to the, a level where the mainstream viewpoint on a topic has shifted you know like gay marriage today gay marriage you know you got to get in line and, and say gay marriage is fine and nah, we've seen but, that. well the thing with gay marriage is that uh i i don't care either way i i'm um it's it's not what, like, like in romania in my country we care more about economics right because the wealth of people makes everyone better including the gays uh, I'm in, I'm fine with gay marriage. Like I, I genuinely uh, do not oppose it, um, yes. and I don't understand people who make a big deal out of it. Um, yeah. But you know what? If you want to make a big deal out of it, you have free speech, and you should be able to do so. Yeah, and I think the they buried the lead with the discussion about gay marriage because, yeah, whatever, gays are fine and they should be able to get married. But the larger point is, who fucking cares about marriage? Marriage is yeah, yeah, that's that's another thing that I was talking about. You know, it's like the the biggest thing was that divorce was a big taboo back in the day. Yeah, um, and now, and this goes back to religion, right? Because yes. here's the thing: if you actually believe that there is a supernatural deity, like it's not a thought experiment, like you genuinely believe it with every fiber of your being, and you make a promise in front of that deity, and you promise that you're going to take this woman and love her for the rest of your life, uh -huh. then it's very difficult to get a divorce. Because if something goes wrong, like let's say, you know, you get bored of your marriage or whatever, 
um, and you want to get a divorce, you, you're going to remember the promise that you made and it's going to be like an extra layer and it's going to be like, well, maybe we should try to get the marriage to work. You know, maybe we should try to, to get this to work. Um, <clears throat> and atheist people don't have this extra layer. Yeah, I agree completely. I mean, this is why it makes no sense to get married because without religion and God sanctifying this whole union, what's the point? Oh, I can tell- give you the point. Um, psychology, like for a child, yeah. the, the, the raising a child properly requires two parents and psychologically speaking, the, the best environment for a kid to be raised in is a household with two, uh, two parents. Right. So it's, it's the facade that because you're married, you're more likely to stay together or you're economically, um, motivated to stay together. And there's tons of people that don't get divorced just because of money. Of course. Yeah. And the only reason, the only, the last bastion for marriage is if you want to have a family and have kids. If you're just two people, getting married is a symbolic, you know, gesture of nothingness. And uh, why would you go to the state to get involved in your personal life? I don't understand. Um, now, and don't tell me it's, it's for tax reasons and all that shit. I mean, it's for tax reasons and all that yeah. shit, as well as right. uh, you know the the inheritance and. Uh, Right. So these things are, there should be a workaround for that. I mean, imagine if you did this with friendships, it's like, Hey V, you know, this is the second time we've talked. Will you be my friend? Let, let's call the Romanian government and I'll call the American government. Let's see if we can uh, draft up a, a document that declares us to be friends. Like, yeah, but if there was like really governmental reasons from our friendship, like get the, get a bank loan together because we're friends. Okay. Then, so yeah, I would probably consider, yeah. Okay. Right. Let's, let's get the government involved. Cause then we get these benefits. I think we need to untether some of those benefits from the institution of marriage. Well, th- those benefits exist because the governments want people to get married. Yeah. They, they want the, people to have children and pay taxes. Yeah. It's just, you know, look at the writing on the wall. Look at the divorce rate. Look at, uh, I mean, you know, it's supposed to be for better or for worse, but really it's for better or divorce. <clears throat> I mean, that's, you know, people just don't. <laughs> Oh my yeah, God. Don't, you, don't you think that might be with the fact that people aren't being as religious anymore as they used to? Well, there was a fear factor there. There was a guilt factor. I don't think it's a good thing, but it, it, it's an unintended consequence of religion that marriages stayed longer. And, you know. Yeah. I mean, Muslims don't, don't have the, the number of divorces that Westerners do. But I mean, think of the other methods. Think of the dowry. Think of, um, you know, the ring, the wedding ring, you basically go into massive debt to get married. You say, I'm committed to you. Why? Because I fucking spent a huge amount of money on this rock that you have in your finger. I know religious people that aren't that, uh, well, maybe it's because of my country being Eastern Europe and more poor. Uh, usually like the dowry would be like a family heirloom or something. Um, but even if you wouldn't have it, like in some cases, if people were poor, they, they wouldn't buy an expensive rock. Now, let me get into a little Jesse Lee Peterson mode here and ask you about who shaped you into the man or the pigeon that we see before us. Um, do you have a, a respect for your father? Is your father a major player in your life, your development? Um, I wouldn't say as much like my parents educated me because they were gone most of the time with work. Uh, oh. So I, I would say that I'm a self-made man in that regard. Do you have siblings? No. Interesting. So who were your role models? Who? Who did you model yourself after, if not your parents? Uh, teachers, um, and then there were like um, international speakers, like uh, what was the name of the guy that I Hitchens, uh, Dawkins. Yeah, I listened to Thunderfoot a lot when I grew up, um, and then uh, I moved over to other speakers. Um, but it, it's mostly like um, university professors and high school teachers that I looked up to. That. Um, managed to get me thinking and the, the, the most important lesson that I got mm-hmm. from my entire high school education is always read the other side. Like always <laughs> listen to the, to the other <laughs> side. Yeah. Um, I just talked about that in a video, man, so many times you'll hear one side of a story and they run with it. Like it's gospel. Yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> you, you know, when someone tries to brainwash you, when they yeah. tell you, you shouldn't read that. You know, don't go to that place because reasons. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, I, I don't care. No matter how discredited a publication is, I will still read it. 
It's like The Guardian, right? Everyone says, don't read The Guardian. It's communist propaganda. No, I, I read it. Like, I, I read The Guardian in order to see their take on it. And then you get like, don't read Breitbart because it's just propaganda. Like, no, I read Breitbart, you know? Do you, do you read The Daily Stormer? I read The Daily Stormer and I watch The Young Turks as well. And here's the thing, like, a lot of people go like, oh, my God, you're reading The Daily Stormer. Like, yeah, but I don't agree with it. You know, I, I do listen to, to see their, their takes on, on world events and stuff like that, but that doesn't mean I agree with it. And I read the Communist Manifesto as well. It's just such a sad state of affairs that our way of determining what is true is to read the obviously biased and exaggerated versions from the extremes and then try to ascertain some middle ground of truth. Like, that shouldn't be the way this is. We need credibility. Oh. The, the best thing that I read is our late stage capitalism like that. They're, they're awesome. <laughs> but um, uh, the, the thing with reading uh, publications that they don't want you to read is that often there will be an event that the mainstream media would not lie about it, but they will not report it. So yeah. the only way you can find out about it is to read from the opposition and they will talk about it. And then you Google it and you try to find videos and recordings and actual things that happen mm -hmm. regarding that event. Yeah. Um, and, and you can try to find out and, and piece together what, what actually took place. Right. You know, it's scary. Like when something happens, uh, there's a murder. One of my instincts is to go to Reddit because I know that those dorks on Reddit are going to be scouring the internet to find out actual information. Yeah. For, for example, this girl, did you hear about this seven-year-old black kid that was shot in America? Um, I, I usually don't read about murders and I don't talk about uh, murders because it's not like, Statistics, I think, t tell a lot more than just one single individual case, you know? That's true. But people still are, you know, passing this around like it's a important thing, that it's symbolic of some other thing. Mm. But anyway, they, they had this woman, LaPortia Washington, <laughs> and she, you know, she was the victim. She was the mother of this small girl who was killed. And I had to go to Reddit to find out, like, her criminal history and the fact that maybe we shouldn't be completely trusting what she's saying. Now, the mainstream media was never, never going to tell you this. They were just going to say, oh, this poor woman. And so sometimes the truth, you need to go outside of the mainstream. They always do that for some reason, you know? I mean, just because someone is a criminal, if they get killed, doesn't make it okay, right? No. But it depends on the circumstance. Like, people are obviously going to be more sympathetic towards the chess champion getting murdered than, you know, some thug that has a long list of criminal records. Yeah, but what I'm saying is if if someone's giving you a story, their credibility does matter. And so understanding who that person is in totality is relevant. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I know people, sometimes people will use it to smear the person or to, you know. I mean, shit. V, there's too many bad human characteristics out there, and it's all amplified, and it's all on steroids because of the internet. So we are way over our head. We're trying to put out fires, but we are our own worst enemy. These are all things, none of this is new, it's just, it's just everywhere. It's just everybody is making the same mistakes that humans are prone to make. You know, confirmation bias. This oh, let, me give you, let me give you a recent example. There's uh, this case where, um, you know, the, the white collar crime thing, it's like, oh, white people called the police on black people. This <laughs> new heist, yeah, this new moral panic. And it ended up, with this woman who was suffering from autism and she wasn't even white, I think she was Latino. She called the police on this black person and the mainstream media wrote about it and then she started getting harassed. Um, and obviously everyone was thinking that it's because of racism, but turns out though, like she's an autist and people that are suffering from her case of autism suffer from also high levels of paranoia. So. Mm -hmm. She didn't call the black person because she was racist. She called the police on the black person because she was paranoid. She thought that uh, a dangerous person. So she ended up like being harassed by this mob of people. And it, it was just the most disgusting thing ever because the newspapers didn't take their time to actually interview the person, ask them like, why did you call the police? They assumed it's racism. They published her name. They published her face. People doxed her, found out where she lives and then started harassing her at her own house. So again, mm. this, 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 patient that's suffering from uh, mental illness, which was uh, high levels of paranoia, having like a group of <laughs> individuals outside her house demanding righteous vengeance. Yeah, that's sickening. Yeah. Totally unjustified. And it happens so often. I mean, there's a couple cases where someone's out of line, but most of them are highly exaggerated. 
because it's easier today to form a lynch mob, way easier. Back when uh, Gaston did it with Beauty and the Beast, he had to, <laughs> he, he had to go door to door. He had to like go, be like, hey, you busy? He had evidence. He, he had the mirror and he was showing to people. Yeah, no, he had a good case, but like you still had to physically get a group of people together. You had to, do you have a torch? I don't have a torch. Go get your pitchfork. And then you had to march up the hill to the castle. It's a fucking waste. Meanwhile, now you just send out a couple tweets. Sean King just did it. Sean, well, you're probably not aware of the case, but I mean, yeah, you send out a tweet to a million people. Next thing you know, you got a huge ass lynch mob. And do you notice that right wingers don't really do it for some reason? Like it, it happens. Don't get me wrong, but it's a lot rare for right wingers to to start a lynch mob than the leftists. And by lynch mob, I mean like trying to get people fired, trying to get people mm -hmm. sacked, trying to get people deplatformed. Yeah, I mean. See, I'm thinking about right wingers. I mean, they are conspiratorial. They're many of them are stupid as fuck. They are angry. They are vicious. They do dogpile on people unjustifiably. But yes, yeah, some of the tactics cross the line, and we should make a point of that. I was about to say, irregardless, regardless of uh, of your ideology, if you dox people, if you try to get them fired, then you really are in a different category. You know, you're the, the only time I agree with getting someone fired is if um, what they said or did actually impacts their job. Yeah. Like, uh, for example, um, if it's a teacher that's pushing blatant propaganda on kids um, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the learning curriculum, like it's just her opinions and she's forcing the students to partake in her opinion, then that is something that influences her actual job. Like she, she's not being a teacher anymore. She, She's... Uh, you know, stepping beyond that. Or if it's like a doctor who gives uh, uh, bad medication to people, I think there was in the news, like this Muslim doctor was uh, giving bad medication to, to people based on gender and stuff, or mm. based on race and stuff. Um, you know, like obviously these cases are uh, things that should get people fired for. Yeah. Well, um, but if it's like an engineer who said some racist shit in his own free time and it has absolutely nothing to do with his job, then I don't care. Yeah, I think we live in a weird little bubble of we're online personalities, whether we like it or not. And there's still a, a dis distinction between your real life, the, the private life, and your online life. And when these two things collide, it always goes badly. I mean, it's very rare. Like today, I'm meeting a fan. Uh, we're going out for coffee. And I'm sure it's going to be a lovely encounter. But everything else is detrimental to me. When I was shopping for an apartment in Melbourne, I remember I was talking to the guy and he was like, so tell me about yourself. What kind of job do you do? And I'm like, I blurted out, I'm a YouTuber. And right as I said it, I was like, oh shit. Because I knew the next question was going to be, really? What's your channel? <laughs> and I had to tell him the channel. And now it was just an absolute crapshoot that the guy who was renting this place agreed with me. And I'm a little bit brash, a little bit, you know, I don't know. People, it takes, maybe I'm an acquired taste. I don't know. So turns out I didn't yeah, get the apartment. Get, like, what, what exactly directly... can people disagree with you? It's like, no, law and order is bad. You know, it's like, no, the Young Turks are great. Like, what, what exactly can, can people disagree okay. with you? I'll answer that. I mean, you can have an honest disagreement with me about politics. Uh, you could, an honest disagreement about guns, about healthcare, about uh, religion. You could be yeah, religious. It, you can disagree with you, but it wouldn't be to the point yeah. where I don't want to see you in my face. You right, know? I'm still going to... I'm still going to offer you insights and entertainment and comedy and music. I mean, so that's why I have a lot of fans or people that watch my shit who I love. This is one of my favorite things of like the last decade. I don't agree with everything you say, but you're still pretty good. Like we don't need to say, to, <laughs> go ahead. I'm actually trying to think of a YouTuber that I wouldn't want to meet in real life. Like I, I would genuinely would not like to be in that person's presence. And, and here's the thing, like there, there are YouTubers that I disagree with, but someone that would piss me off so much mm. that I would just, you know. Jimmy Dore? I actually like Jimmy Dore, the Viper, the spitting man. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, the one who betrayed the... Uh... <laughs> He's getting more and more radical. It's kind of funny. I, I, I don't, don't know if I like him because he likes Trump. Like, you know, you know yeah. that when he goes into that voting booth, you know yeah. that he votes red. <laughs> oh, dude, he's on the other side of the horseshoe, and it's oh, just wild. Oh, yeah. hot thanks, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Jimmy Dore show. He, uh, 
You watched that shit? I watched the Jimmy Dore show. Oh god. Well, here's the one thing. I I would prefer someone who is extremely on a side than a centrist. I fucking hate these half assers. Even a centrist, what does it mean? It means someone that has uh, sides from like political issues from the left and the right. No, everybody, you could say that, but you could still have stances and defend your positions. Like, I don't, I hate Philip DeFranco. Yeah, but hate, here's the thing like, when you say centrist, do you mean someone who doesn't want to engage in politics and is a fence sitter, or someone who actually has a strong ideology that can't be defined as left or right because it has things from both sides? Yeah, that's fine. You, there is such a thing as legitimately being in the center. But I mean, everyone can say that. Everybody, there's someone to the left and right of you. I mean, so it's it's kind of arbitrary, but this whole idea that, well, the left seems a little bit wacky, and the right they can kind of get out of control. So I think the right answer is to be in the center. We're oh done no, here. no, no, that, that's not. Like the, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of this shit is binary, like abortion. Should it be a right or should it be illegal? No, I mean when when I say um, the center is like if you take a political compass test and yeah. you're in the center, right? Like that that is a legitimate strong political position. Yeah, there's something. Have. I agree with some of these tests. I mean, they're not the be all end all, but they're useful. I thought it was funny that Sargon has drifted. I mean, I don't understand how you're an adult man in the middle of your life and you're drifting to that degree politically. I, I like that's like D- Dave Rubin shit going on. Like, can you please like figure out where you're at and no, stop no, letting? If you, wanna, if you wanna talk abortion, like I, I can give you a nuanced issue of it, right? So you got okay. the, the the centrist issue, right? Like you got the 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 right wingers who are like you should never have abortion. Like abortion mm-hmm. is murder in every single case. You should never have it. And then you have the the far left that are promoting it. It's like the only correct answer for a woman who who thinks about abortion is to get one. It's like get one, get, get two for the price of one. Buy one abortion, get get one free. You know. Uh, and you have these ladies that take pictures with the cells before and after. Look how much I lost in weight after the abortion, right? Now, I do think that abortion should be legal because my country had it illegalized and it ended up in um, quite a lot of tragedy. I I spoke about it at length. Uh, But it should also be socially discouraged. Like it should be a last alternative and there should be a social taboo in in getting an abortion and it should be treated with um, a certain level of dignity. It's not like, oh yeah, I'm I'm going to to flush this out, you know. I, I, so yeah, that that would be the centrist position where you're like, yeah, fine, legalize it, but I would still like socially, I would not find it uh, morally justified. Yeah, I would say to that, if you're calling that the centrist position, yeah. what you're what you're suggesting is that to discourage it and to prevent abortions from being necessary, you would need to support groups like Planned Parenthood, which is not a centrist position. That's a left position. Well, the groups like Planned Parenthood, as I understand it. They they always try to encourage the woman to have an abortion. Like if you have a woman that doesn't really know, like she she's on the sideline and she's like, maybe I should have it, maybe I shouldn't. They will try to convince her to get it. Well, no, they'll give her her options and then they'll give her a swift kick in the camel toe and right in the gut to try to <laughs> initiate the process. No, they. I, I think you've been listening to right wing propaganda. I think they are very considerate. I think they're very knowledgeable of what this means, the gravity of the situation. They, they have oh, no like, vested like, interest. In, they, and this is like something that I know Planned Parenthood does, and I as a doctor can tell you that they're outright lying. So when they're saying that there is absolutely no downsides to an abortion, mm-hmm. they're not presenting the full truth. Because yes, abortion is a very safe procedure, and you're not going to have any negative side effects. But they don't mention the other part unless you want to have a second child. Because I... if you have... If you have an abortion, uh, the medical instrument uh, can scratch the uterus and create a scar over there. So the next time you want to have a child, you can have the egg implant in that scar, and it's going to cause a uterus tear, which is a very dangerous medical condition, and it can lead to the death of the patient within hours. And usually the solution is to remove the uterus altogether, so it's going to sterilize that patient. And they don't tell this to the public. I I humbly reject the premise of what you just said. Why? I'm highly skeptical that people that work at these clinics do not inform everyone who's considering an abortion of all the medical risks involved in the abortion. 
that to me would seem like an unbelievable violation, completely irresponsible. And I would also venture to say you have never gone in to have that conversation, so you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that, that is true, but uh, the thing is, like, for me, it's very weird as a European to understand that there is a concept as an abortion clinic. It's like it, well, here in Europe, but, you you go to the medical hospital, which yes. has you know all, all different practices, and you go to the Abgin department, and you you get the abortion well, there. So, so Again, I don't understand like a clinic that specializes in abortions. It's well, a because, <laughs> well, but it is a necessity though, that there is a need for that. But also you've already bought into the right wing framing of it. They don't call themselves abortion clinics. No, that's I know, but doing. obviously it's like a clinic that specializes. Yeah, in, but like, that's, the... yeah, but okay. I mean, but that's like calling a hospital a euthanasia center. Well, oh, they well, do yeah, do but, that. Okay, so, do do so that. if if you have a clinic that specializes in one thing and okay. that is like abortions yes like okay calling it an abortion clinic is not very disingenuous is it no like but they, they spe no but they they f fill the need there it's a supply and demand thing but they also offer birth control they offer other options they offer counseling i mean they're doing other things it's not just a drive through abortion place at least planned parenthood isn't okay but all these places have been defunded and they're sort of drying up. And it's crazy that that's a, such a major issue. Like even in Ireland. But why not just have like a normal hospital that throughout well, other procedures also offers abortion? Like, well, now, yeah. You're, del <laughs> you're delving into a whole greater topic, which is what is wrong with our healthcare and why don't we do it more like you guys do it? Ah, so it's an Americansky thing. Okay. Well, I, I think that there could be some um, shakeup in how we do things. You know, it's uh, I think it costs a, a great amount of money to have a kid in America. Like you're out of pocket a lot. I mean, with... here in my country, the way we fixed the AIDS problem and we fixed it so good that we actually had people from the UK and people from America coming to find out how we fixed it mm -hmm. is to promote condoms. Like throughout school, like they constantly talked about condoms, this condoms, that. And here's the thing, like when, when I go to a kiosk, like a nonstop kiosk in any like neighborhood you want, they will sell condoms. I went to Britain. The first time that I wanted when I when I got off the plane was to buy a condom. I, <laughs> to couldn't... <see> <laughs> <laughs> anyway. yeah. uh, I couldn't find a condom. Like they, they yeah. don't sell that they're, they're not easily available. They're very... mm. and, and I assume that might be the same problem in America. Probably to a less much less greater extent. I mean, there are condoms in every 7-Eleven in America. So it, it's weird. America is weird because, you know, I, I mentioned our stance on prostitution is like the most backward fucking thing you can possibly imagine. Um, but I'm in Denver right now and marijuana is legal. Every, everyone is smoking all the time. You can't mm. go from one place to another without smelling weed in the air. <laughs> and so it's just strange. Like we're all about freedom, but oh, prostitution? No, 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 no. Fuck that. It's just that... I would vote for someone who wanted to make a change on that. Which politician has the balls? We need uh, Ocasio Ortez Cortez to get up there and say, "We need sex workers today." And she needs to. <laughs> I mean, this is something that people in Europe don't understand. Like, it, it's. I, I don't understand why the Democrats don't put that on their table. Like, yeah, female like, empowerment. Yeah, like if you manage to legalize gay marriage in a yeah. country that was as Christian as America, I think you get get prostitution legalized and get some tax money out of it. You can fund yeah. the world. Exactly. Frame this, it like that. Yeah, this is how Trump can get the funny public. Oh, dude, it, that's going to be his October surprise in 2020. <laughs> He's going to say, we're going to build the wall, or not the wall, do, do it for something like, we're going to cure cancer with the tax revenue we get from legalized prostitution. I mean, that's some radical, but like balls. No, it has shit. to be the wall. I, I, I would definitely like, can, can you imagine this? And then you have like prostitutes that say, uh, I, I fought for the wall or something like that. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny, like th this whole wall is idiotic and like this border. Man, it this would be, like, do you know how much tourism it would get? Like it would be one of the world wonders. It would be bigger than the Wall of China. Right? So <laughs> yeah. I would visit the United States to see the Statue of Liberty, to see the uh, monument you know, in Washington and to visit the wall. Like, it would, the the yeah. wall is a colossal waste of money. And it's not even, it wouldn't even be a wall even if he got the 5 billion. But it it's doesn't matter. Be, it's, it's a statement. I know, but the statement says we're morons. I mean, Mexico is not, we don't have Hamas bombing us from Tijuana. You know, this is not an issue. People could fly to America and overstay oh, their visas. Oh, you don't view it as an issue, right? It's and, not, and it's a lot not of, issue. Yeah, but there's a lot of things you have that other people don't view it as an issue. But if your side wins 
and it wins because they campaigned on that issue and people voted for it, then it has to be done. It's absolutely just political gamesmanship and it means nothing. But I can imagine <laughs> if someone is right leaning or centrist or whatever in Europe, those dudes are the ones that want and need walls. Well, that why does Mexico have the wall on its southern border then? Uh, do they? Yes. Why does well, Israel have an all? Well, they have a wall because there's a huge amount of uh, influx of immigrants that are, you know, okay. not so, helping so, their country. I agree. Right. So the wall stops people. Like well, it works. Like it, uh, it doesn't work. I mean, I mean, is that going to stop everyone? Obviously, there's going to be people that are going to dig under it or hop over it, but it's going to dissuade like someone with a car that wants to travel. Uh. <laughs> yeah, this is. Uh, this is <laughs> I mean, it's a uh, desert over there. I assume you know. <laughs> this is depressing. I mean, look, it's way too late for if you wanted to spare the South of America or the you know, South. I, I bet there was someone like you during China, a bald guy like you with a long beard during China. It's like we shouldn't build the wall because it's costly, and the Hans will still oh, get involved. In. That, <laughs> yeah, that wall didn't work either. People got over that. Well, uh, they got over that, but think about the people that stopped. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, but okay, but this is my point. They didn't have airplanes back then. The, yeah, but, yeah. You know, it's not about fixing 100% of the issue. Oh, geez. Right? It's not even an issue. This is It's a distraction. That's my point. Mm. Here, here's an interesting thing, though. I, I'm here in Denver, and I was in a hotel, and I asked, uh, there was a guy who was working, uh, like a janitor type guy, and I was asking him where the gym was in the hotel, and he looked at me and he said, no habla inglés. Oh. And I, that, that's the first time in my life in the middle of America I've never, and I grew up in Los Angeles, never have I met a person that didn't speak a lick of English. And I can't imagine what his legal status is, but like, wow, that was new for me. I don't know if that's a trend, but for me, that was a unique encounter. Look, the, apparently the wall in Hungary stopped uh, a lot of immigration. Well, the Hungarians are, they keep that wall mentality up. I spent hey. a lot of time in Budapest. That's a homogenous place. They you got, know, we got the, Yeah, we got, we got the Romanian military patrolling the Hungarian border. You're worried they're coming to you? No, no, no. We got like a joint operation. Like the uh, Romanian military patrols the Hungarian border and their airplanes patrol our airspace. Well, yeah. <clears throat> when when the Muslim immigrants are looking for a place to settle, they're thinking Germany. They're thinking England. Uh, yeah, but they have they, to cross through through Hungary. But they know that Hungary is not going to welcome them. And there's another couple like that, like the Czech Republic, I think, also. I think are, there was like a, a case a couple of years ago in Romania. They shot someone who tried to run over the border. Uh, not from the outside in, but from the oh, inside out. Yeah. That's some old school like wall of. Uh, yeah, and, and this is like why, why it baffles my mind when I when I'm seeing like the the thing with the Honduras caravan and stuff like that. Because here in Romania, it's like, oh, I, I mean, if you try to pull that here in Eastern Europe, it wouldn't go well. Let's put it like that. What just like run through the border? Yeah, we'll yeah. be like you know stop. I'm warning you, bang, shot in the air. Well, and then if they keep going, it's like, baka, baka, baka. And then they don't go anymore. You know? <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes you get reminded that uh, shit is pretty savage out there. You know, we sit in our comfortable suburbs and we dick around on Netflix and we have fun. And then you show up at the Israeli airport and it's dudes with machine guns. You know, they oh, yeah, have those I saw that in Britain. Yeah, in the UK. Yeah, like that. They have that in France, in Germany. They don't fuck around. These, these guys are, they will patrol you. You get on a train in Germany, a guy's coming and he's asking you for your ticket. And if you don't have your ticket, there's issues, there's problems. You're you're bounced. You can't get through that. I wanted to troll a London policeman like they they were armed to the teeth, like they had those machine guns and you know those helmets down. And uh, I wanted to troll one, but uh, the lady I was with told me like that's not a smart idea. Yeah, and I was watching this protest in France, and I saw these riot cops, and they're getting beat up on. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's amazing they didn't just open fire on the crowd. It's a PR nightmare, of course, but... No, if they open fire, Macron is dead. Like, the, the thing is, and this is what a lot of people don't try to understand on the YouTube political sphere. Like, they keep talking about the nation as if it's an isolated thing, but there is an international community. Like, if you open yes. fire on your citizens, like, you're going to get so many economic sanctions, it's not even funny. Well, at least rubber bullets or tear gas. I mean, they have to disperse these people. You have to have some order. Yeah, I mean, they, they do throw tear gas, and I think... Didn't they fire rubber bullets? Like there, there is a picture with one okay. getting hit by a rubber bullet in the crotch, but like actual live ammo, no, that that's not like that. <laughs> he got wait, he got hit in the crotch. I got to see that in slow motion. Yeah, that, that's um, on YouTube. Upload it. Well, forget Macron being dead. I think France is really dead. I think it's already dying a slow death. Uh, France is to be avoided. 
right now I'm looking for a place to live. Me and my I girlfriend. Know, ever since the Yellow Vest, I, I kind of appreciate France a little bit more. I don't understand their fascinations with burning people's cars. I can imagine that you park your car downstairs in the baseboard and you find it in flames and you're like, why Yellow Vest? I supported you. Why you do this? But the Yellow Vest thing is just a current little you know, topical thing, but they've had major problems before with that. Protests, riots in the streets, oh, violence, yeah. crime. I mean, the, the yeah, Muslim... It's a yearly thing with France. Yeah, I, I just think France... I, I worry for France, and it's a no-go zone for me, to be honest. I, I See, you, you say that, but there's so many Romanians that want to go to France, and they go there, and they stay there because they like it. Yeah, but you're assuming that Romanians are smart and make wise choices. Yeah, it's an economical choice. Yeah. Why not go to Germany? There's tons that do. Yeah, I mean, there, there are people who go to Germany. There's people that so, go to France. I mean, it depends, you know. Germ Germany is the strongest economy in Europe. It is, but it's also very Orwellian, if you want to put it like that. Like, they, they broke down people's houses because of things they posted on Facebook. Okay, so, so here's what we do. Create an anonymous name and YouTube to your heart's content. Yeah, think about it this. You know, you got people who just got out of a totalitarian system. Like, they don't really yeah. want to go to another. <laughs> yeah, freedom <laughs> might seem appealing for them. I can see that. I mean, you run out of options, though. Every place has been spoken for. It's not like there's some utopia. There's no city on the hill. Um, I found it interesting, though, that you have not been to America, and you know so many Americans, and you know of America. Oh my God! Like uh, what? What is it? Sixteen or seventeen year old? Year, uh, a sixteen or seventeen hour flight? Jesus! Yeah, it's, it's worth it. Uh, Go to Aust it? I, I, I was on a plane for twenty four hours getting to Australia. Loved it. I would rather go day. to Japan. Fee, it's one day travel. You could put in some of your nerdy. Go watch Lord of the Rings on the plane. You could, you know, listen to a couple podcasts. Boom, you're there. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think you have a point. It's also the money involved. Like it's it's incredibly expensive, especially for me. I think it's like uh, what the thousand dollars just sure. for tickets alone. Okay, so then, but yeah. you have fans. You could do a little world tour. I, I don't want to beg money from my fans just so I can go to the United States. I don't know. Like I, I don't like no, YouTubers no. that do this. Okay, um, I'm, not, I'm not saying beg money. I'm saying use the money that you earn from your channel to go to New York City as a start. How much money do you think I make on my channel? Uh, I could check Social Blade. <laughs> I don't know. It's not but... that much. It, okay, and, well... and also take into account my government takes 50% in tax. So Okay, well, you're a doctor. Yeah, but I don't uh, work at the but... hospital anymore. I finished med school. I have my uh, uh, unpaid leave taken, so oh, I don't okay. make money from it. But so uh, You're not a plastic surgeon? Putting... No. I, I, uh, I finished and uh, I took microbiology, and then I uh, decided to change my specialty into general physician. Okay, well, then I will grant you that there are economic considerations, but my point is the motivation. You should go to America, period. Uh, everybody should at some point in their life. Probably, yeah. I, I, you know, I want to see an American diner. Like, I, I'm really fascinated with sure. those. I don't know why. I, I see them in movies, and they look so nice and homey, um, and I also want to shoot some guns. Uh, that, is, that is possible. Uh, have you ever in your life shot a gun? No, never. And uh, I heard they're very loud, so I want to experience that. Uh, actually, when you get off the plane, we hand you a gun, the way they hand out uh, flower lays in Hawaii. You just get one. They're That's really what the actors want me to believe, yeah. <laughs> like, um, if I go to a gun show, apparently I can take any guns that I want. Um, I'm going to do a video on Hassan Piker and Brown <laughs> Fabio. Who, uh, he was on record on the Young Turks, and he said, you know, we need to be talking more about like uh, socialism and arming the proletariat, he said. <laughs> what did Cenk say? What, what did Cenk say? Cenk, okay, no. Cenk and Anna and some other person on the panel, they all laughed at him. They're like, uh, Hassan, what are you talking about? Arming the proletariat? They're, they couldn't believe that he just let that slip out. I, I genuinely think Hassan is not very smart and he's very easily influenced by the people. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine what's what videos he's watching. Because obviously, nobody gets the expression arming the proletariat. <laughs> if you're a douche bro from Rutgers, you're not, that's not a phrase that enters your mind. He watched someone, and they said that, and now he says that. Yeah, if I was Anna, it's like, uh, Hassan, look, uh, we are on the race side of <laughs> communism here, not the class side of communism. Like, we are <laughs> the bourgeoisie, you idiot. <laughs> no, no, he'd come back with, yeah, communism, you're using historical versions of communism. That wasn't the ideal form of it. Like, I, I have a very nuanced stance <laughs> between Stalinism and Leninism and Marxism. Do you know why they call it cultural Marxism, by the way? I, I think it's a very poor um, name, but it's 
Uh huh. Let's let me teach me. Okay. So the and I'm saying this because I know some of your fans are here. Um, the purpose of communism, the purpose of socialism, is to achieve the communist utopia, which is something that never happened in human society. It's <laughs> a classless, uh, genderless, uh, everyone is equal type of society with no money, no currency, no nothing. Right. Right. Um, everyone goes to work, they work as hard as they can, and then uh, everyone goes into the store where they can take whatever they want, but they only take what they need. So this is like the communist utopia. And in order to achieve it, you have to go through socialism, which is the economic Marxism. Um, so you, you know what that is. Now, that failed, and now you have the uh, Frankfurt School of Thought that say, well, instead of using economics, we can actually use culture. And that's what cultural Marxism is. The end goal is still communism of this genderless, classless society. But they don't use the economy, the economy in order to get there. They're trying to use uh, the idea of culture. Mm. So yeah, that's why pretty, they call it cultural Marxism. It's pretty <clears throat> warped, and it's got a terrible track record. I've, in fact, the only time I've heard of it even remotely working is in Israel. Does it work? I mean, well, it, it's, it's, I, I don't know if Israel has like the no border activists. Well, no, it, what was it? Uh, no border, no nation, no deportation. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess Israel as a whole <laughs> is sort of a capitalistic, socialistic type place, but within the little communes, within these little, maybe, maybe it's a size thing. So if you have a, a small group of people, you have a better chance. But there's still no guarantee that this is the optimal way to run things. And we should be very wary, obviously. But what I love is that the people who promote this are, tend to be young, and they tend to have no idea of history. No, that they're actually very old. They're university professors, and they indoctrinate the young into pushing this ideology. Oh, well, those guys need to be called out even more. Yeah. If, if they're older, they should know better. But if they're sticking to their guns on this issue, then that's shameful. Now, if you look at the... Um, what was it, Kavanaugh situation, um, you would see, you know, those leftists banging at the door as if they were mindless zombies. Um, and there were like footage of like very old people teaching them what to chant. And there was like this, this old guy like pumping his fist in the air and say, we will go in front of our cabinet and we will demand blah, blah, blah. And everyone was just chanting after him, like indoctrinated people it was just surreal to see. Hmm. And it's interesting that the, the, the old people didn't get uh, arrested, right? Because there were a lot of people arrested that day, uh, but none of the, 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 the protest organizers, the, the actual uh, intelligentsia got arrested. Oh, my God. It, life is such a shit show, isn't it? Let's be honest. There's just so many stupid people out there. It's a never-ending well of entertainment. Mm. Uh, but it can leak into really uh, negative impacts on society. So it's not all shits and giggles uh sometimes i think that what you or i do on youtube is just almost has no value whatsoever but then there are moments where things do actually matter and it only takes one or two people to like uh cross the line and get violent say you know we we're dealing with people who have that potential so young human beings are dangerous Given the wrong set of ideas, they can easily spurg out and go down a path. Um, I, I agree, but uh, on, on the upside, we live in the most safe um, time when humanity has ever been, and in our nations at least. So it's all perspective. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, but like, I'm glad that I'm living now and not during World War II, for example. <laughs> oh yeah. No. Uh, let me bust with our super chat really fast. Uh, 279 Californians from Critters Bargain, uh, AIU King of Ad Hominem, why I don't follow anymore. Um, Sek Tony, Mithriade, God King Devon, long live equality, Eurovision, and MLP. So it seems that the uh, fan base is a little bit split. He's a friend of mine. <laughs> <clears throat> Who, Critters Bargain? Uh, Mithridate. Oh, I see. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Kubus Seven wants a link to that video. I'll, I'll DM to you uh, after this. Uh, hit me up. Um, what the camel toe? Eject. Vote for no, the one with uh, Bolsonaro. Okay. Uh, vote for camel toes for all Muslim women in government. Hmm. There was this Muslim woman that called Trump a motherfucker recently. Yeah, uh, she's the new girl. Yeah, the new girl. She she had to affirm, uh, you know, affirm her presence there. Um, and there's also like a law that um, 
now allows Muslim women to to have the hijab in the parliament in the Senate. Oh yeah, of course they're gonna peacock with that. Yeah, you know, you know what's interesting? It's like I, I'm not the Islamic specialist. I'm not the um, imam. Um, mm. But isn't Islam like very strict about women? Like they're not really allowed to go into politics. Like that might be a little <laughs> bit haram and problematic. So like, if you really want to enforce religion, like why not? Okay, like you want to be treated differently because you're religious. Well, then we're going to impose your religion upon you, and you know you have to actually follow everything. Yeah, well, we all sort of turn a blind eye and just thank God that they're trying to reform it or ignoring the savage passages of the Quran. But yeah, I mean, it is inherently a little bit weird if you have just open Muslims in our houses of parliament. I mean, really, we should have a council and be like, so where do you stand on pedophilia or, um, you know, honor killing or, you know, just go down the can list I, of can problems. Can legal to, to mention, well, not, not to mention, but uh, the European Human Rights Court just uh, handled a case where a woman uh, called Muhammad a pedophile, and it was declared that uh, it's illegal and it's grossly offensive, and she has to pay uh, a fine. Well, yeah, that, that does seem a little bit backward to me. But the problem is, is that if you were to grill a Muslim in Congress over her stances and whether or not she disavows the heinous shit that is in Islam, then you're forced to then go through every Christian, which is like 99% of them, and say, are you in favor of stoning witches? Mm. You know, and, and so because we know that that is, would be necessary, nobody's going to say anything. We're all going to yeah, pretend. They, they honestly think like, uh, see, this is the thing with Christianity. I think it got them through strong reforms. Like, I, I think it's very difficult to actually find a Christian that legitimately wants to stone a witch. Yeah, but they still have equally antiquated ideas on a variety of topics. And yeah, of course, every religion does, but I don't think it's as bad as other religions. That's true, but this is a point that's going to get lost in the shuffle. And it, to me, it, it's crazy <laughs> that so many of our leaders still believe this ancient dog shit. Like, that... It's not a See, the, with, with America, it's actually a problem to find out who believes it and who doesn't because it's a requirement to get into office. So a lot of people will say that they believe it mm -hmm. even if they don't. Oh, yeah. The, the percentage of actual believers has got to be really small. And everybody yeah, kind of knows that. Yeah, and it's the cafeteria way of doing religion. Like you pick and choose what you like, you know. Yeah. I, I'm just I'm happy the way that shift is going uh, in America and England. Although it still lingers, the remnants of it are just entrenched. Well, the, the thing with religion is that even if you stamp it out, apparently there's a rise in witchcraft in America, and, and they're trying to hex Donald Trump last time I checked. Um, oh, I wish yeah, there was a YouTube channel with that. Just yeah, there's, there's actually a huge rise in Wiccan and paganism, the newspaper says. And, you know, I, I just think like people need some sort of spirituality, so they're, they're going to find like random things. Like even if you were to press a button and wipe out Christianity from the face of the earth, you then have like other cults and other religions that mm -hmm. will, will manifest. I agree. We did not have much forethought as atheists when we sort of dismantled religion or, or attempted to at least um, mm -hmm. with our ideas. It, it reminds me of the scene, do you remember Raiders, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones? Opening scene, he's trying to get this golden head, this statue head, and he's being very delicate with it. He had to get through a bunch of booby traps. And he's trying to take the head and put a ba uh, bag of sand on the thing at the same time so that it doesn't trigger any new booby traps. Hmm. And it turns out that this gold head statue weighs more than a bag of sand. And <laughs> so it triggered the booby trap and down comes this huge ass boulder. So what atheists did, we, didn't, we just took the head. We just took the golden head. We didn't even put a bag of sand. So it left people with nothing to replace the meaning of their life. Nothing to larger than themselves, no scaffolding. We just ripped it all out. And yeah, I mean, as an atheist, a lot of us were angry because uh, our parents were like, oh, don't listen to rock music. That's the music of the devil. Uh, don't play video games. That's, uh, you know, takes you away from Jesus. Don't watch Pokemon. If you play Pokemon song backwards, it's like worship Satan. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do... And, and it, like a lot of people were fed up. It's like, look, the music I'm listening to doesn't hurt anyone. The, the video games that I'm playing aren't satanic. I can watch cartoons and I'm still going to be a healthy person. And that caused a disdain for religion, not because of religion itself, but because of the moral busybody of 
authoritarian people that just wanted to micromanage your life and they were doing it poorly. Like you knew that that particular decision doesn't make any sense. And um, mm -hmm. I, I think that's why there were a lot of atheists. Yeah, people, they like control. I could see that. But I think it's left us with a problem of what do we invest our faith in? What do we invest our... Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people invested in socialism. Like socialism, yeah. you know, I say it, it's like a religion, but then you have the CEO of Apple who says that if we don't censor hate speech on our platform, it's a sin. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, how, how can you say something like that and not have me point out that you are a cult? You're You're basically having a religion now. The thing is, there's no obvious answer because some people will try to dive into nationalism, and they, but then that doesn't really make sense because we're so connected now, and the a, a globalism, the good variant, not the right wing sort of fear mongering variant, is normal, natural, and a good thing. And so, what else do we do? Do we dive into our race? Now you have this racial identity groups popping up, and this is the thing they're going to invest in. But that doesn't, like, ah, sorry. Yeah, no, you're right. You're, like people will find different, because when I had the discussion with millennial woes, there was a very interesting guy in the comment section saying that uh, I anger my ancestors. I, I don't know how exactly he formulated, but it was like, he, he became the speaker for my ancestors and said that, uh, you know, my ancestors are angry with me, even though he never met my ancestors and I don't think he, uh, but, but it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's not as bad as religion, I guess, because with religion, um, people, do bad things because they think they have the backing of God behind them. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just, you know, you put your faith in an ideology and uh, if, if that ideology gets contradicted, then you're going to get really angry and upset. Um, and and it's, it's not nationalism, it's just pretty much anything like socialism and uh, cultural, uh, you know, like this neo-progressivism. Yeah. What do they call it? Like intersectionality and feminism and whatnot. Right, social justice people like being a part of that because it's just something bigger than them. And this is what we seek. Everybody needs that shelter. They need the comfort of being with just a, a large group of people, but also so something that has lofty goals. You know, there's, they want to have a sense of importance. This is why a, you know, a young Muslim guy will become a jihadist because, Oh, I'm super important now. Yeah. But think about this, right? Think about this. You genuinely believe with every fiber of your being that God is real. You have mm -hmm. absolutely no doubt. And he tells you that in order to achieve world peace is to have Islam dominate the world. And then if you do a, a, a terrorist act or something like that, all of a sudden it's a greater good because what you're really doing is you are pushing your ideology. Like you, you are pleasing the supernatural deity. Yeah. So if I, yeah. Even, even the people that you murder, you're not doing. You're doing it out of compassion for them because they're not going to sin anymore. Right? Like they're they're going to reach a higher level of hell basically because you ended their life before they could sin. It's a it's a disastrous worldview to have. Mm -hmm. Right. If you take it, if you agree that they actually believe these things, then it does make sense in a fucked up way for mm -hmm. them to, to think what they think and do what they do. Uh, the you problem know how is though to dismantle Islam with with this ideology. Oh. Huh? If anyone who tells someone else to uh, to commit martyrdom believed in heaven, that they would have committed martyrdom already. Huh. Isn't it true, though? What do you mean? Okay, so if you are to believe, like if you are an imam or you know, like one of these radical extremists that believes that if people um, kill themselves in the name of the prophet or whatever, and they reach heaven, if you generally believe that. Wouldn't you have killed yourself so you can reach heaven before them? Well, the actions speak louder than words, though. You can't just think something and get the, the you know, the benefits of it. It's uh, God is going to judge you on your deeds and whether or not you're a warrior for Allah. No, but according to them, like if you sacrifice yourself and you die in, in uh, trying to mm. push your faith, you automatically have all of your sins forgiven. This is why a lot of terrorists uh, ended up drinking heavily and getting with prostitutes before they committed the act. Right. It, God, is it so messed up? I mean, not only is the problem they portray, that's fake. The solution is fake. Yeah. So like, same in Christianity, the original sin doesn't exist. And also there is no salvation and there's no heaven. So it's like a salesman comes to you and tells you, oh, have you dealt with the invisible lice? You know, we got to- Someone said that suicide is illegal in Sharia and I should read the Quran. 
look, I had an imam on my channel and we <laughs> talked about this, right? We're not talking about suicide. We're talking about martyrdom, which yeah, right. washes away every single sin within the Quran. If you commit martyrdom, now maybe I'm wrong and I didn't understand it properly. But the <laughs> well, imam, I assume, knows better than what I do. Yeah, we're not talking about young Muslim men jumping off buildings and killing no. themselves because they're depressed and incels. We're talking about guys killing other people. It, the fact is, they're just most of them are shit at military tactics. So their only way to kill people is to strap bombs to themselves. I mean, that's it's just they flame out, and they half of them or more than half of them wants to flame out. They're sick of life. They hate it. Do you think it's a coincidence that the most the country that downloads the most porn is Pakistan? Is it? Yeah. Well, I, I also know that once you ban something, like people will try to do it. Like if you ban something that's not necessarily harmful, like dancing, for example, in Iran, oh. uh, a lot of people have like these underground dance clubs where they just go and to dance for the sake of it because they uh, they manage to break the law by doing so, and they know that the law is ridiculous. This sounds like a pitch for a movie. Mm. I like that. There was, I, I think there was a Xena episode where Xena and Gabrielle travels to this this land where it was illegal to dance. And, you know, as they reach there, they, they feel the need to dance because, like, just because you're not allowed to. <laughs> not, <laughs> you know? not one part of my brain was expecting you to say, I think there was a Xena episode. Well, there was a Xena episode. <laughs> <laughs> have, you watched, have you watched all of them? Not all of them, but I watched them I was, when I was a kid. I watched okay, what about the Hercules one? Oh, I love that. I love the disappointed meme that came out of Hercules. <laughs> this is for, well, he was, yeah, the Xena Hercules crossovers as well. Yeah, he's quite Did they the have actor. Sex, though, like that's that's something that I never understood. Did they ever what? Did have they sex? ever had sex? Yeah. Um. I yeah. I'm not sure. That's some deep deep lore there. Some fan fiction. Uh, <laughs> he is a crazy Christian guy. That guy who played Hercules. He's done a lot of Christian propaganda ever since because he has no career anymore. Like bad B movies. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what happened with him. Like he starred in um, that sci-fi, like Hercules in Space, people would call it. Um, Did he really? Uh, Andromeda. Yeah. Was uh, was, was it was that show? was that a sequel to Gay N Words in Space? <clears throat> no, 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 no. Oh. We don't uh, mention that here. But anyway, um, I, I understand that he uh, after that he just disappeared, and I don't know why, because he was like a, an, an okay actor. Well, you know what he would want to do is have a rebirth as a career. See what what older action heroes can do is follow the Liam Neeson plan with Taken. Uh, Liam Neeson is now an action star, and he's you know an older guy. Denzel Washington is doing the same thing with the Equalizer. Uh, you got Keanu Reeves is doing the same thing. So there is a market for that. We like because he has the recognition. We know this guy. Yeah, and I'm sure that he's auditioning or he's you know his agent is trying to hustle up a script. Would you would you see him in Game of Thrones? Oh no, he'd ruin that. Can you imagine him with an accent? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what the problem with him is? I think it's because he's a Christian. That's an issue. Like Hollywood right now is um, incredibly bigoted. Let's put it this way. Like if you don't have the right views, they probably won't work with you. Or how about just no views? I don't really care to know the views of the actors I watch in films. Well, let me let me just read you something from a Marvel editor so you can. Uh, you, you can understand, right? And, and again, like, take into account, this is a person working for Marvel. Like, he, he's not just a random nobody. He is a, uh, um, quite a higher up. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, Rest in peace, Stan Lee. All right, here we go. Yeah, oh, yeah, they, they attack Stan Lee. But he, just, just check this out, right? Okay. I'm sharing my screen. And this is from Dan Arrow. He's got, like, the blue, the blue ball here. Yeah, why why do I know that name? He's a big player, isn't he? Yeah, he, he is uh, an editor at Marvel, and he's responding to Ted Liu, who is like, as 2018 ends tonight, it would be appropriate to remember and honor all the police officers who died in the line of duty this year. There's no higher public service than to risk our life to protect the public. And then Ariel says, they literally have one of the least dangerous jobs on the planet, and they hunt and murder the people of color. Fuck bootlicking liberalism. And what, what I'm showing you here, right? Is that the exception? Mm -hmm. Like, if you go and you look at the Marvel editors, mm -hmm. they are tweeting as if they're CNN anchors. And <laughs> I, I don't think that there is much difference to what Hollywood is like. It's yeah. just the exact same culture, you know, the exact same corporate culture. And 
they're hiring based on nepotism and based on ideology. You know, like how Christians used to hire other Christians? Well, mm -hmm. I think progressives only hire other progressives and they promote each other. Oh, God. Uh, that is a, quite a tweet. I can't believe that's real. Oh, I wow. can show you, like, so many things if you want. Like, if, if I open my folder from the comic book industry, like, well, there, there would be no end to it. I did just watch the new Spider-Man, Enter the Spider-Verse, and, uh, yeah, it was probably the most progressive thing. Well, I is, is it both? Seen. Like, I haven't seen it. Like, I, I have no interest in seeing it um, just because it's like, okay, like, I get it. Like you have Spider Man, and that's cool. But like all the other Spider Mans, are just gimmicky. Like this is too much fan service, in my opinion. Oh yeah, it's a healthy dose of that. But there's a lot of um, visual brilliance and creativity on the screen. It's definitely worth the time and the money to watch it. But you, know, you can still criticize the the story, the plot, the sort of overreaching. You know, but look, what what are they doing? They're taking a, a Spider Man. This is the hundredth story we've heard about this dude and his you know his challenges it's kind of amazing that they've milked it this long yeah i mean they they try to i i guess rebrand spider-man in the new spider-man movie right it's uh well these goofy kids rather than um the the old story um but I, I just, uh, I, my, my point isn't with the movie itself, it's the people that are making the movies and the statements that they make on the Twitter. And the way it seems is that if you're a right winger, like my friend Ethan Van Skyver, you have no more place in that industry the moment you're outspoken. And you don't even have to be right winger, leftist like you would be flown out as yeah. fast as humanly possible. And it's not just Marvel <laughs> we have to worry about, it's Google. You know, Google is. Oh, all, all of social media, all of Silicon Valley. Yeah. But I mean, Google sits on top of all of Silicon Valley. So if, if those guys are one way, then I don't think Google sits on top. I think it's the payment processors, to be honest. And as I'm looking into it, it seems that it's the credit cards that are pulling the strings. Do you think they're as politically activist as they can be? Do you think they're going to ramp up? Um, the thing with the, the credit card companies is that they don't want spotlight on what they're doing. Yeah. So if you if you give them controversy, if you give them a backlash, they will back down. And I have cases where that happened. I'm planning to make a video. So. I would have assumed, and maybe it's cynical, that their desire to make money supersedes their desire to be you know, politically righteous. Um, it's about control, actually. Like if you look at the uh, these corporations, they're engaged into politics. So it doesn't make sense that they would donate millions of dollars to, let's say, your favorite woman's campaign, and then <laughs> allow people to um, to do activism against her. Uh huh. Yeah, they do have a lot of power, and they need to be regulated. And at least there is some competition when it comes to, you know, yeah. the banks. If you want to see where it all started, look into Operation Choke Point. It's a video that I'm making. It's uh, an, a thing that started in the Obama administration where mm -hmm. the government tried to force payment processors and banks to fight against terrorism and uh, well, other things that are legal, yeah. but they didn't, the, the government wouldn't like them. And that's when they showed private companies that they can actually do this and get away with it. Yeah, they're, well, when it comes to terrorism, that is an interesting topic. And uh, it reminds me of the Apple versus terrorism or Apple versus the U.S. government where they wanted them to unlock or give us the password to, to break into some dude's phone. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were like, no, we're not privacy. Yeah, and, exactly. But the thing with Operation Choke Point is that it was the Obama administration that uh, actually managed to, to get the power to force companies to do these things. And once they opened the, the floodgates, like companies went like, okay, well, why can't we expand on this? Like mm -hmm. we can actually have control and, and do whatever we want. Oh yeah. We definitely have to be cautious about that. But imagine if the banking world was like the Patreon world. So you have one, <clears throat> what if we had one bank, one bank with one guy who had an ideology and that's the one thing we have to avoid. No, but so, you, you don't understand. You, you got Visa and MasterCard, right? Yeah. And let's say you got a bank that wants to work with Gap or wants to have like the Daily Stormer you know, get donations through your bank. Okay. Well, Visa and MasterCard are going to tell you either you drop this client or we drop your entire infrastructure. <laughs> right. Well, we need the uh, the crypto people to step up, and we need some workarounds. 
Well, why do you think there's so much slander in the mainstream media about crypto people? Just go Bitcoin Nazi and you'll find article after article after article with the mainstream media slandering them. And let me show you something else, right? Let me, while you're here, um, are you aware of the website bloodmoney.org? Never. Okay, so I will share my screen right now. Okay. And this is a website that's who's taking blood money from hate groups. Oh. And you get an entire list, like they managed to get fancy website uh, yeah they got 158 websites defunded um mm. and what they do is like they're trying to target these companies uh -huh. in order to get them to defund things that they consider hateful and usually what they consider hateful is what the southern poverty law center considers hateful mm -hmm. and as you can see they got like this uh entire um hold on what, what do they call it they go yeah, go on. Do they, do they have a target list? Do we see the yes, yes, most yes. wanted? Mm -hmm. Yes. And they got like a company status, proactive. Company has created an affirmative acceptable use policy that can be enforced to ban hate groups. Engaged, company has no acceptable policy but has actively removed groups under pressure. Not engaged, company has given no indication on having an acceptable use policy or a standard practice. Um, huh. And you, you get all these companies that, you know, they're, they're going to use their activists in order to call and they're going to use their connections in the mainstream media in order to slander. And they're going to, for example, <clears throat> if they target Breitbart, uh, they're going to use the mainstream media to slander PayPal for allowing, you know, donations for Breitbart to be taken. And, and most of these companies that they, ch that, that they attack are not illegal. Like they're yeah. not doing anything wrong. You know, they're, they're completely legal. Uh, I don't know the right wingers to do anything of the sort. No, um, no, no. This is dangerous. Yeah, like for example, look, you got Stripe over here that they're doing Visa, American Express, Discover, Amazon, right? Um, and, and there's other groups on Twitter like Sleeping Giants that do the exact same thing. There's blogs on uh, Tumblr that do the exact same mm -hmm. thing. I know about this one because it's quite a major player, and they got a couple of people, uh, you know, <laughs> white supremacists are scrambling. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and white supremacists, whatever they want to mean. Like, for them, Tucker Carlson is probably a white supremacist. Sure. Yeah. Shut down Fox News. Shut down Fox News, yeah. Like, Tucker Carlson is actually under attack by the leftists. Um, yeah, they, they showed up to his house. Yeah. Look, uh, the momentum is on your side. Um, Patreon and PayPal already pulled out. Payment well, providers that, must not do the work to reject blood money. Blood money? It sounds like blood diamonds. What oh, they're, yeah, they're going after the Charlottesville event and they're oh, God. out, right? And, and they have like these articles, violent proto fascists. I wonder if they know that proto fascists is socialist, but anyway, came to Portland. The police went after the anti fascists. So it's basically like the police attacked, uh, arrested people from both sides that instigated violence. And this is what the article is about. Uh, a year after the Charlottesville melee, Silicon Valley still profits off extremism. Uh, white supremacist rally cost DC at least 2.6 million. I remember recently someone was talking about Charlottesville in the context of uh, white supremacists and hate crimes. And they were suggesting that that guy who floored his car and was running away from people attacking his car, and he goes into a crowd, that was a hate crime, like a racially motivated hate crime. So a white guy kills a white woman and is a racist. Like that's what we've come to. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst racist I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And they're so, God, the way they manipulated her death, which was, you know, obviously, I mean, the guy was malicious and um, negligent in what he was doing and deserved to be punished, but he was, this was not like a hit. He didn't know what he was doing or what the effect would be. And she died of, with heart complications obviously based off this crash but still no, apparently apparently that's that's not true like they um went through trial and they found him guilty and apparently like the death cause was the the injuries that she suffered okay uh, right but it's like a byproduct it, this is not a double tap to the back of the head this is you know this was chaos well apparently in in the trial they found him guilty like he had the intention to kill so okay but I just find it crazy the way this event has been manipulated as if this guy represents everyone there, as if this guy even knew what he was doing. And they downplay earlier in that day, there was a black guy who had a makeshift flamethrower who launched a huge 
a huge stream of uh, well, they actually fire. treated him as a hero. Like I remember reading a <laughs> uh, a paper. I, I don't know in what publication, but apparently, like he's a nurse or something, and uh, he just happened to find that on the ground, oh. and he he wanted to defend people from the evil right wingers. And I was like, yeah. huh? well, just. Imagine if a right winger had taken out a makeshift flamethrower and tried to light up a black. Oh my guy. god! Like you, you stop <laughs> But like, you know what I like about the picture is like how casually he's doing. Yeah, it's so well, relaxed. It, like it's it's a normal that, afternoon for him. That day and that situation was so fucked up that the a guy who saw him do that pulled out a gun and shot a warning shot at the ground to make him I, stop. I saw that. And, I saw and that. that and that guy was a Klansman. <laughs> so like. The clan's fucked up. This guy with the flamethrower's fucked up. It's like, oh my god, what is happening? I, I, well, you know, like the thing is that the Young Turks, instead of offering the context and you know telling the story from you know the oh. the whole aspects of it, they were just uh, talking about how a guy shoots at, at yeah. a black man. It's yeah. like they they cut it out, like they automatically cut it out the flamethrower bit. Like oh, they the, just, it, it was insane. I remember doing a video on that. They were <clears throat> bitching at this Klansman for firing his weapon as if we couldn't see because they had to show the footage. And like in the corner of the screen, there's a dude lighting a guy on fire and they ignored it. Yeah. They couldn't. <laughs> like, that was that was a low point. That was one of my favorite moments. <laughs> you know what I think about the uh, Young Turks is that if you look at them trying to get people to the left, like they're, they're promoting left uh, doesn't work. But if you look at it like they're trying to radicalize the subscribers they already got, then it makes a lot of sense. I think it's more pathetic than that. I think at this point, they're fully committed to this company and to their narrative that they tell themselves, which is that they're helping benefit the planet. And they're, you know, they win awards. They win like humanitarian awards. They think very highly of themselves. And now it's about money. It's about maintaining this money, maintaining a lifestyle. They have a winning formula. So whatever they've been doing has made them X amount of millions. So they're just beating that dead horse. But isn't it interesting, like when the Young Turks wins a re uh, an award, it doesn't say anything about the Young Turks, but it says a lot about the people giving the award. Of course. It's like the, the awards are worthless. But I mean, even when they win Streamy Awards, what does that mean? It, they'll make a video saying, hey, everybody vote for us to win the Streamy Award. Oh my God, I remember when they were <laughs> they, they were living during the midterms because they were getting top voted and Czech was so angry. It's like, oh my God. Uh, do you know like at the um, VidCon when they went, mm -hmm. apparently everyone had a Q&A session and the young Turks, like instead of giving people the microphone and trusting them with that huge responsibility, they would ask people to write the question on a piece of paper and then give the pieces of paper to Cenk, and he would just filter out and, and pick the questions that he liked. Well, you know what's crazy? They can do whatever <laughs> format they want, and it's so telling that they don't have any voices of opposition on their channel. Yeah. Like the, well, except for Hassan, who wants to arm the, uh, the Yeah, party. you're right. Exactly. They're, they're willing to negotiate the, uh, the, or have the communist voices on. But uh, that's so interesting. Yeah, I mean, even CNN, you can criticize them all you want. They'll have different voices on. Oh, did you see the Jimmy Dore versus the Asian guy that they have? That was a, a really heated huh. argument. Yeah, yeah, it was retarded, but I mean, yeah. It was about censorship. <laughs> yeah, and Jimmy I mean, Dore was right. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, so was my broken clock. Yeah, but the Viper, the, you, you, you will not pick on my spitting Viper. All right? Okay. Like, Jimmy Dore is the only leftist that I like. Stay away from him. But can you imagine how boring this is like Dave Rubin level boredom of hey guys, free speech is good. Yes. But, yeah, but, that, but in that world, in, in his bubble, I know, I know. that is greatness. I know that, that <laughs> I will grant that. In that world, in that context, it is a <laughs> radical statement to say we shouldn't deplatform people. Yeah. But it's not it's not that we should like corporations shouldn't deplatform people. Yeah. Well, did, there was a conversation between secular talk, Kyle Kalinsky and Hassan Piker. And they were talking about deplatforming. And Kyle Kalinsky was trying to say, wait a minute, I believe in principles. And I believe whatever standard I have for my uh, enemies, I should apply towards myself. And he goes, yeah, I don't agree with that. He goes, so wait a minute, it's bad when they do it, but when we do it, it's not bad? He goes, yeah, that's what, that is what I'm saying. <laughs> it was incredible. It was just like, and, and then Kyle's like, well, I think that's stupid. He said it right to his face. It's really interesting watching people on the far left differentiate themselves from each other. Oh, but there was this uh, interview with the BBC and Tommy Robinson, and Tommy Robinson asked the BBC guy, it's like, 
do, what, what do you think of the rally today? It's like, oh yeah, I think it's okay. Like, do you see any extremists here? It's like, no, 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 we don't see any extremists here. But you are going to report it that it's a far right rally. <laughs> yeah, and the BBC that. guys that goes like, yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> <laughs> I know they do the same shit with uh, Pegida in uh, or AFD people out in uh, oh. Germany, and it's you know time after time it's just like housewives and cat ladies and just normal people with normal lives who are expressing concern. And they're like far right extremist group rally against you know anti-Muslim bigotry. It's the facts don't line up with the way they are reported. And eventually, oh, the AFD got bombed. Someone in the chat said, that. "Yeah, I heard about that." <clears throat> I didn't hear about that. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's too much shit to keep track of. I mean, well, to be honest, if you look at the bomb attacks throughout the world, like if I'm not mistaken, like a huge proportion, a big chunk of them are done by Muslims, and the rest is done by communists. So <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> Oh yeah, go Wikipedia keeps track of terrorist attacks, and it's just a never-ending parade of Muslims. But and it, it's, and also, it's Sunni usually, like Sunni. You know, like people keep saying Muslims, but if you look at it, you know, it's not the Shiites that or the Kurds that are doing it. Like they're, exactly. they're more into the uh, political assassinations. Right, and that's <laughs> noteworthy. I mean, that's a, le a level of nuance that I think more people should be aware of, actually, um, because to just group all Muslims, it's like no, 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 no. It's way more involved than that. But it's such a tiresome topic. I mean, did you hear about the beheadings in Morocco? The the one with the two women? Yeah, these two I dangerous. actually, I, I saw the video, and I have to say, oh, like, a piece God. of my soul was lost that day. They, yeah. Oh, um, V. Did you watch it from beginning to end? Yeah, it was, it was, it, it actually, it, it, here's the thing. Like, I, I am used to seeing, um, death because I, I work at a hospital so so i do see you know people passing away and it's terrible when you see it especially in real life but but that that shook me to the core like that was just yeah. another level of somebody i wish i wouldn't see it like i wish i would have honestly seen it to be honest. somebody sent me a link to that and out of curiosity i clicked the link not to see the beheading but to see that someone sent me a clip to an actual beheading i was like did they really just send that to me and i clicked play on it i thought about it for about 10 seconds clicked play on it to verify if it's an actual footage of this, within the first three seconds of that video, the woman lets out a scream that was something worse than I've ever heard yeah, in my life. Yeah, it was, it was harrowing. Like, that's the thing. I think it's the being a YouTuber thing because you have like tens of thousands of people and they constantly send you stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, oh my God, like, I, can we not talk about it? Because it, it just fucks me up. It's... Yeah. And so I, I sent a reply back to him. I was like, stop sending me beheading videos, but do you have any hardcore, like, angry aggressive sex videos that is like too hot for the porn sites to send me and he hasn't written back i'm just kidding i, I have not but yeah, i am no, curious it's just... well it's it's like the dark web what else is out there who i mean no i, I, I guess it's the morbid curiosity that makes you want to click it but from now on like i, I wish i wouldn't have clicked it and uh it's it's just yeah i, I don't want to talk about it seriously it's, it's... i know i i can't believe you sat through it and and now that's a part of your memory well it's like you know when you when you see a calamity or a train crash or something like that is very difficult to look away. I haven't sat for like the last second, but I just, mm. seriously. Well, I think it was important though for us at some point to have seen a beheading video. I really truly believe that. I don't think it is helpful to continue to watch all that stuff, but when ISIS first started doing that, it was, you needed to be aware that this is something happening. Because yeah, that's that's the thing that really marked me, right? Because when you watch a horror movie or you watch some special effects where someone, um, you know, ends up getting killed or beheaded like in Final Destination or something like that. It's fictional, right? And you get desensitized to it. But you, you have to understand this actually happened to a person. And, and that, this, is, this yeah. is why I didn't even make a video about it. Like a lot of people made a video and they, they mocked these two girls and it's like, oh, well, what did you expect? Why did you went there? Blah, 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 blah. I couldn't because I know what happened. And who the, who the fuck would mock these girls? Not, not necessarily mock, uh, yeah. but use them as political ammunition. Yeah, it's so um, stupid. Yeah. I, I mean, this is why I didn't do it. Uh, because, and, and a lot of my fans requested me to, I think even a Patreon asked me to, and I said, look, man, no, sorry, this this is a line. Um, because I, I saw what happened to them, and it was just so fucked mm -hmm. up that I, I didn't want to. Right, yeah, but, yeah. And, and for citizens, you know, we don't want to be uh, psychologically scarred with this, but our leaders and people that are creating policy, they need to be fully aware of the threats. And it's also it's incredibly relevant to point out that this was not a Jewish person, people that did this. This was not Christians, not atheists, and this is not a one-off. 
This is not just some random event from some psychologically disturbed guy. <coughs> they, they, there's a rhyme and reason to this. They were following a set of ideas. You know, this is tied to ISIS. This is tied to a larger chain of events. It's a very recognizable pattern, and it hasn't gone like, away. Like, like here's something that I don't get, right? Like people, um, especially in media, they always uh, when when you want like a generic bad guy, you're you're going to go for the Nazis, right? Uh, unless you want zombies. I think zombies and Nazis, like they're the generic bad guy that you can put in any action film and you, you, you can mold them down in a video game and right. Robots. Yep. Yeah. But no one puts ISIS. Uh, maybe uh, that, maybe there's a, a, <laughs> a wave of new movies might come out. Um, I'm watching a show right now. Jack Clancy. Is, uh, I don't think they will touch it. I don't think they will touch it with a 10 foot pole. They, yeah. they never go after it because you can tie it with Islam and it's then Islamophobic. Well, maybe not in films, but on television. So Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan is the, the TV show I'm watching. And also Homeland. Both of these deal with jihadism and uh, terror cells. Yeah, but if you look at Homeland, it's usually also like, here, here's the difference between a right-wing movie and a left-wing movie, right? In right-wing, it's usually the enemy is outside. Like, you know, you got your nation, like you got America, and the enemy is someone from outside of America trying to hurt America. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at left-leaning movies, you got the enemy is always in the inside. Like it, well, that's, it's from within. It's from the government. It's you know the the corrupt American system. That's the real enemy. Well, I'm not sure if Homeland is a left-leaning show or if that's even. Useful. Well, come on! You got like CIA working against the president. You got. Um, you know, you know well, like people, people within the government that are constantly trying to betray their, their, their the, the American people. So technically, that <clears throat> redhead was a, a mole. He was a, an operative, you know, a Muslim guy who was within the American. He was an American, but it was still the ideology that was the bad guy. So even if it well, was look, American, look at, for, for example, right, like you got um, the Muslim kid, I think, in the last season. Who gets in a truck and yes, uh, does, yeah, yeah, does like this this bombing attack, terrorist mm -hmm. attack, right? And I was like, oh my god, I can't believe they did it. Like the critics are going to believe it. And then the next episode, it's found out that it's not really him. Like someone actually used him as bait. Like mm -hmm. it was an American it, that was it an American? I thought it was another Muslim. No, 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 it was an American. Like they uh, they planted that in order to try to get the right. president into a location, well, like power grab. It, or something. If someone could make a case that a show like that is uh, pulling their punches on Islam and the threat of Muslim terror, then I would be concerned. But the very fact that the central theme of that show is the threat of Muslim terror, to me, is, you know, that's a good thing. Well, I think it was in season one, but as, as the show went on, it, it moved away from it. Mm -hmm. I mean... It went to the Russians, and it played into the Russian hacker narrative. Um, well, the truth is, you in Romania, me in Denver currently. Um, mm. Muslims are not the biggest issue, uh, but that doesn't no, mean it's not. I think. Well, that's a very interesting issue, but it doesn't mean that the Muslim threat and issue is not completely on the front line for so many people all around the world. The problem is, guys like you and I, we get tired of that. Like, I got tired talking about religion. It's dead. It's it's mm. it's not interesting to me anymore. And so you just said I, you didn't do a video on a Muslim beheading because what are you going to say? You're against it. It's bad. Like. How many times can we sit, go through this? It's aggravating that it's still here, and we feel sort of impotent and powerless to stop it, and yet we still feel the need to vent or maybe at least expose to talk about it, to like shine light on these things, because, damn it, I want to get to other topics like sex robots and AI and free will and pop cultures, things like that. It's much more fun to talk about. It's interesting because everyone says like, oh my God, you're talking about the young Turks again. And uh, you do need to have a certain level of charisma to be able to talk about the same subject and still keep people interested. Well, first of all, I'm not talk talking about the young Turks is not the young Turks. They cover every topic in the news. So I'm talking about the topics in the news and I feel it's relevant and important. And I'm perfectly fine with that. I will, I'm happy to justify that to you. These are a group of people in LA I was raised in LA. They work in Culver City and West Los Angeles. I used to live and work in Culver City and West Los Angeles. I, I feel it's somebody's duty, and I'll take on that mantle, to, for the record, point out that these people are bad for society and are causing harm and are causing bloodshed. The, the amount of propaganda they put out, and I understand my channel is you know very small and is you know this is all just a symbolic gesture in the end, but 
I want someone, if you think that the Young Turks are going to just put out their bullshit and nobody's going to speak back against them, you're incorrect. I'll take that. I'll be that guy. <laughs> no, I mean, everyone used to speak against the Young Turks. I used to have them like the, weekly on my channel, but uh, it gets tired after a while. Well, like, well, look, I'm, I'm not such a LARPer. Like, half of the shit I do is just for fun. And it's no, hysterical. I know, I know. But, but it, the, the thing is, like, people started to assume that, yeah, it's the anchors. Of course, they're crazy. But uh, no, like, maybe the world needs a guy like you that will ta ta tackle on the, the things that no one else wants to talk sure. about. I'll, I'll do that. And, and look, oh, it's gonna... look, 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 here's another publication that you could look into. Uh -huh. Called The Root. It is the most yes. shared leftist publication on the is internet. It, I thought it was more like a black thing. It is a black thing, but it's uh, the the number one leftist publication that's being shared on the internet. Yeah, I'll check that out. I mean, there's some crazy outlets like Everyday Feminism. I'm sure you're aware of. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's not a big thing. Let, let me let me actually look at the root what what hot takes they have to say. Um, well, that is a interesting point to understand the size and influence of various groups. Somebody just did a a study with that. They had a graph talking about the sphere of influence of guys like Joe Rogan versus Stephen Colbert versus Stephen Crowder. And uh, I think you and I are actually on that list. We're, we're somewhere in these, uh, in the graph. What? Are we? Yeah. It's a, Tim Poole did a video on it. How am I doing? <laughs> You're a, a little spot. You're a pale blue dot. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, the alternative influence. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So it's the hit list. Because when you are lost in your routine online, it's hard to determine how popular things are. What is the reach? <clears throat> oh, but it wasn't about reach. No, no, no. That list was about who's streaming with whom. Um, no, no, no. I'm saying there's a new one. Tim Pool did a new one with uh, another guy. Uh, not a bullshit graph. Oh, can, actual... you give me, can you give me a link to it? I, I want to watch it. Yeah, somebody in your chat will have oh, it. Please, please DM it to me. Like, I, I want to see it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. You watched him pull, huh? No, for on time to time, he you sort should, of you uh, stream it with him, and it should be like the bald council. <laughs> well, I'm I'm out of the closet, bald. I think he's still in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you, you're going to be happy when you're old, and everyone gets white hair, and you're going to be bald. It will make you look younger. <laughs> yeah, I I wish I wish I had. Somebody asked me what was your fantasy hairstyle if you had one. And, I've always been fond of the David Beckham faux faux mohawk. Faux hawk. <laughs> I wish I could rock that. I would did totally you, did you try different products, like hair growing products? Like oh yeah. It, this was when I was at Berkeley, and I asked my dad, and I think I bought a book, and it was such witchcraft. They, I was going to Chinese markets, gathering herbs and medicines and roots and shit, and I, <laughs> I, I mixed together something and I put it in my hair and. I, Somebody told me to like stand on my head at night. I was like a vampire. It was crazy. I tried did you, everything. Did, did you check your testosterone level? Because usually people with high testosterone don't have hair. Yeah, I, I don't know. I got I got fucked. But it it gave me a lot of life lessons, you know, because the basic being life is not always going to go the way you want. Now you have to get over that and stop crying about that and deal with what is real. And that's a big lesson to learn, especially for mm -hmm. a young person who's like immortal and is like, why me? This isn't fair. It's like, give me a break. Somebody just got cancer today, you little bitch. <laughs> oh, I, I can't live my life like that because then everything you experience, it's like, well, there's nothing because I'm going to experience something worse. It's like, yeah, but I don't care. I'm the center of the universe, you know? Yeah, but that is the one thing we have control over is our attitude and perspective on things. <clears throat> yeah, I guess that's true. But but sometimes I, I enjoy being pissed off and cursing and whining yeah. about something. Oh, it, it not, not only that, I think it's important to discredit your raw emotions. I mean, they're natural, they're real. They're there for a reason. Someone in the chat just posted an egg. Why did they? Oh, damn it. That's what, too soon. What, what does that mean? <laughs> they're saying I look like an egg. It's very <laughs> Oh, I see. But I, I don't think like, you look like an egg upside down, to be honest, because you got like. Yeah, they, they don't get the, the right. Um, do you know that, that, that if you put an egg and you try to get it to stay like on on the base, it doesn't. But if you boil an egg and you put it on the base, it stays there. I feel like I've seen a science thing about that at some point. It seems like something uh, Bill Nye would talk about. <laughs> oh, when, when he doesn't talk about the genders, yeah. Yeah, has, is that show dead? I think they have to have canceled that, right? His reboot. I know, but I, I love the fact that they try to make him like the the science for for the people. You know, it's like. Um, 
Yeah. The, the argument from authority or something like that. Right. <laughs> it was a stretch and a half. I mean, he's barely a scientist. And the, the fact that, like, I want my scientists, I want my Bill Nye to tell me that water is H2O. I don't want him to then pivot to, by the way, they used water cannons to blast black people in the 1960s, and that was terrible. Fuck those whites. You, you know, know that water isn't wet? You just blew my mind. No, seriously. Uh, like, wet is the property of an object that comes into contact with water, right? And it's a property that can be removed. So if you put water on your desk, uh -huh. it becomes wet. But you can then wipe out the water and the desk stops being wet. Um, it's basically the idea that water can't be wet just like fire itself can't be burning. Well, I guess you have to... If it can't be on fire. You're I'm playing with layman's definitions of terms, so you'd have to give me a scientific definition of what wet is for that to make sense. Yeah, but water isn't dry either. Like th these are states that objects go through. So in order for something to be wet, it needs to also be able to be dry, which is why water can't be wet. Are you it's telling me that? Are you saying that farts aren't gaseous? No, farts are gaseous. Okay, solid sometimes, or I guess that's a different word. Uh. <laughs> you're, See, you're I'm, a, I'm trying to have a philosophical conversation <laughs> here, and you're bringing it to farts, dude. You, you've been bouncing around. We've covered many topics. Uh, it's very enjoyable. Uh, I do have to meet up with a fan, however. So yeah. Um, also, like I, I do have to learn how to upload my uh, streams on BitChute. Um, I, I don't like having them up on YouTube. Well, you're concerned uh, about your well-being on this platform. Yeah, I, I am definitely very concerned about my well-being on this platform. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make a. I'm telling my chat now that I'm going to make a BitChute account where you're going to find these streams. And um, you're you're going to see them there. Nice. Um, Diversify. Play it safe. Yeah, of course. You should too, by the way. Especially you. Yeah, I, I got some fallback plans. I got a website and stuff like that. Did you, did you get a big boner when you got your channel back? It was exciting. It took a long time, a lot of effort. Months went by, and uh, and one day you said, "God damn it." I'm going to get it back. And you went into an airport and there were like trains and planes and shit. And you, you're like, uh, you know what? I'm not making money. If you want me to keep doing this, you get me my YouTube channel back. Yeah. It, it was an interesting little moment to see how you react. Like I'll make a video and it gets way less views. You know, it's just a small audience and just the disappointment. Again, it's perspective. It's like I once had a big channel. Now I have a small channel. Okay. <laughs> you got you got to move on though you got to just how many channels did you got like you you, you got like eight years of stuff stoppable seven or some shit at one point yeah no i mean i just i just have uh the, the one main one and that's the only one i post to i mm. i edit my videos i do streams on a couple other ones but i don't want others i just i would much rather have one but it's the same thing you're talking about you got to have a safety plan you got to have a safety net yeah. Anyway, thank you for being here, Devon. I really appreciate it. If you want me on your channel, I'll uh, grace you with my presence. Wait a minute. This was streaming? No. This is not just a private call between you and I? No. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll delete it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Hi. All right. Highly fun. Talk to you later. Yes. See ya. I'll, I'll read some of the more super chats. Um, Critters bugging. Kurds are nationalists. Other Muslims hate them. Uh, Brad Burns, 24, had so many loyalty betrayals. It was loved by right wingers back in the Bush era. Yeah, that's true. But again, like my my point isn't if a show is loved by right wingers or left leaner, is that you can tell who writes the show if it's a po a political show about America, for example. If the enemy is from without, then it's a right winger that wrote it, and if the enemy is from within, then it's a left leaner. And this is not 100% accurate, of course. Um, it's just like something that I noticed. Uh, doesn't matter for $5 wrong. Water can be wet in multiple ways, in multiple views and circumstances. I'll let you think about it. I thought about it. Thought about it hard. No, I'm not deleting the stream. Don't, don't freak out. Um, I'm just planning for future streams because there are times when I, um, for example, go through a stream and... Um, I'm sharing my video, and you can see some commercial or an ad on the website that I'm on, and it shows some boobage or something like that. And it's like, oh, now I have to delete it. Uh, Rocky Desert Flower for $2. Muslim women can hold positions of power. See, as I said, like, I don't know. 
Like that that's how I started. It's like I genuinely don't know if it's haram or not. And if you say it's not haram, then I was wrong. So thank you for watching. Uh, I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all tomorrow.